When I was just a boy, my father was the night watchman at a manufacturing plant located in rural area between Big Rapids and Chippewa Lake, Michigan. Our house, which, if I remember right, was a perk of the night watchman job. It was across the street from the factory. The plant building was right next to a large wilderness area of state land. At the time, it was simply known as the Hay Marsh, but now it is officially called the Hay Marsh State Game Area. We didn't understand it at the time, but Dad was always very skittish about letting us play outside after dark. He would sometimes talk about hearing coyotes or bears roaming around in the hay marsh when he was walking the perimeter of the building at night. One night in the summer of 1961, Dad walked back to the house to sit on the porch and have a cup of coffee and a sweet roll. He had a good view of the entire plant property. He saw some movement near a chain link fence behind the building. This was approximately 3 a.m., so he felt quite sure this person wasn't there by accident. He drew his gun and watched for a few minutes. That's when he noticed this was not a person at all, but something much taller. He said it appeared to be covered in brown slash gray hair. It had very broad shoulders and a powerful chest. It alternated between walking on four legs, then standing up on two. He said it seemed to be looking for something along the driveway. He later said he couldn't quite believe what he was seeing. He quietly moved into the house and grabbed his Kodak Signet 35mm camera, which was his pride and joy. At this point, I should mention that Dad was quite a photography buff. His father had owned one of the first camera stores in all of Ohio, and Dad got the shutter bug from Grandpa. As he stepped back onto the front porch, the creature moved slowly along the driveway, directly underneath the lights. He adjusted the camera shutter for a long exposure, held it as still as he could, he said he was shaking pretty bad by then, and snapped a picture. I have enclosed a print of it in this letter. Dad said a few seconds later, the thing dropped back down to all fours and slowly moved off into the woods. He sent a print to the local newspaper and sent copies to several magazines. One that I think was called Mysterion published the photo in their spring issue of 62. Dad had a copy of the magazine for years, but it was misplaced after he passed away. I still have the negative strip that contains this image. If you'd like to have someone examine it, I also still have my dad's Kodak Signet. I haven't shot any pictures with it for several years, but I'm pretty sure it still works. Sparta, 1987 One weekend, back around fall in 1987, my two best friends and I were staying at my family's cabin which is not too far from the small town of Sparta, about 20 minutes north of Grand Rapids. My two friends later left to have dinner while I stayed behind in the cabin. Following the dinner, the men headed back towards Sparta and the cabin. What happened next would shock and disturb them for years. It was dark and they were on a rural road. Suddenly, both of them saw something standing by the side of the road. In the headlights of the car, it appeared to be a human-like figure covered in gray fur. As they got closer and passed the figure, both of them got a very good look at it. It was the size of a man standing on two legs. It was covered head to toe in gray fur and had a wolf-like face. It even raised its hands and seemed to snarl at them as they drove by. They said it looked like a werewolf right out of a Hollywood movie. 
my two friends didn't dare stop by. They continued driving. And of course, they were peppering each other up with questions. As they are having this animated conversation, they pass by the sign that says, Welcome to Sparta, and drove through the small main street and continued out on the town in the direction of my cabin. Their conversation about what had just happened continued when both of them looked up to see the same Welcome to Sparta sign again, followed by the same main street that they had just driven through only moments ago. They hadn't stopped or turned around. They had been traveling in the same direction on the same road, but somehow without any noticeable interruption in their journey, they had somehow been sent backwards several miles. Until this point, it would be easy to dismiss this event as someone merely playing a joke. However, the time displacement characteristic is what sets this encounter apart. While such things are well documented in UFO and alien abduction stories, it's something we've not seen before in Dogman's sighting reports. Andy continues, I remember when they finally showed up in my cabin. They arrived no later than what I expected them to, around 9 p.m. or so, and I remember how animated they were about their strange encounter, but I just assumed that they had seen a large dog and were telling me an embellished story in order to get a laugh. But 20 years later, both of them still insist that this was no joke. I have no idea what to make of this story. Maybe it was just some teenagers in a werewolf costume playing pranks. And did my friends really experience lost time afterwards? Or did they just make some wrong turns on their drive and didn't notice because they were talking and distracted? I have no idea, but I would love to know if anyone else has seen similar things in the Sparta area. Reed City 1993. The area around Reed City, Michigan has been a hotbed of dogman activity. This report details an event that occurred nearly 20 years ago, but the witness remembers it like it was yesterday and is unshakable in her story. Her name is Courtney and her encounter took place during the winter of 93 into 94. Courtney was a teenager at the time and was sneaking cigarettes behind her parents' home near Todd Lake northeast of Reed City. The sun was setting on a clear, cold winter day. Courtney was facing a large abandoned barn on the property next door. The barn had always kind of spooked me. It was filled with old rusty equipment. The outer planks were all rotten and it sagged and leaned in every direction. My dad said to stay away as the whole thing was weak and could collapse. On that evening, I was standing about 50 feet from the barn and saw sunlight coming through the gaps in the sliding. Courtney took her eyes off the barn for a few minutes. Then something caught her attention again. There was movement. The light flickered, but I couldn't really tell what it was. Then it turned its head back and looked straight at me. It was at least six feet tall, if not more. It was dark colored. It had a dog-like appearance, pointy nose and really big, pointy ears. Courtney dashed into her house to grab a flashlight. When she returned outside, she shined it toward the barn door but the animal was no longer there. She walked closer to the barn to look for tracks in the heavy snow. When she didn't see any, she realized the creature might still be inside and ran back to the safety of the house. She never saw the creature again. She later talked to a neighbor who had seen something the size of a buffalo, but the shape of a dog in the same barn just a few months before Courtney's encounter. The neighbor said she had been so frightened she was near hysterics for days. Her father had taken his gun and searched the barn, 
but found nothing. At the time of these events, neither of the girls had heard of the legend's song and did not know about the Michigan Dogman until years later. Waters Meet, 1994 This report comes to us from an anonymous contributor who grew up in a nearby county, but spent many years of summer camping on family property in Michigan's Upper Peninsula. This encounter took place in the area of Watersmeet, home of the famous Paulding Lights phenomenon. Oddly enough, the Paulding Lights are also known as the Dog Meadow Lights. I was 13, had just gotten new rollerblades for Christmas, and since the main road where our property sits is paved, I couldn't wait to ride around. I went blading by myself and stopped to rest for a second. On this road, the woods are so thick, there's not much space between the road and the woods in most parts. And I remember seeing trees pushed down on the road that my dad said was done by bears, since my dad was an avid bear hunter. I remember not hearing any of your normal sounds of nature, not even birds. The air was still, and the sky would be pure dark in not too long. I was deciding to turn back when I heard a rustling behind me, and something emerged from the left side of the road. I assumed it was a deer, and paused and made myself as quiet as I could, so I could watch, and slumped down on my stomach in the middle of the road. It was about 600 feet ahead of me. When I got myself settled in the road to watch it and look up, I realized what I was looking at wasn't a deer. It was on all fours, with brown, grayish fur. At first, I feared the worst, thinking a bear had caught my scent, until I saw its outline and color. I thought I was looking at a dog until I realized the face was too primitive looking, like a fox or a coyote's. At this point in my life, I had never seen a wolf in real life, and it was far too far for me to make it out of the face exactly. The Michigan Department of Natural Resources has always recognized that wild wolves still roamed in Upper Peninsula, although they were thought to be in very limited numbers, and the only in extremely remote areas. It is conceivable this witness was seeing one of those wolves, but then something strange happened. It extended its front legs, and in the slowest, longest seconds of my life, stood up on its hind legs, sniffed the air, walked for about five steps, then got back down on all fours and walked to the other side of the woods, then disappeared. I don't remember how long I laid in the middle of the road, staring in the empty space. I saw this thing stand, like a human. I remember my jaw hanging down as low as it could, and a pool of drool on the cement underneath it. It finally clicked in my mind that perhaps I should rollerblade my butt back to camp as quick as I could. The witness reports that while the creature never stalked or pursued her, she slept very little during the rest of the family camping trip. She never told anyone about what she had seen, fearing she would be ridiculed. At the time of her sighting, she had never heard of the legend song, and would not until 2004. She moved to Southern California in 2008, and has no interest in camping ever again. Pina, 2001. My dad and I have a story to tell about our encounters with the dogman. My dad's story took place in the mid-70s. There is a cemetery behind the Alpina High School and a wooded area beyond that. There are many trails that run through here. In this area is a place called the Sandies, where all the young kids would go and party. My dad and two of his buddies 
were in a canoe in broad daylight, paddling from the sandies around the back of the cemetery. The banks of the river are 10 to 12 feet high in places, and some trails run right to the edge. The three of them saw what looked to be a big dog running behind them on the trail. They didn't pay much attention to it until they heard a splash. When they looked, it was swimming after them. Then it went from a dog paddle to the chest and front legs coming out of the water and wading after them. They decided right then not to wait around to see what it was. Honestly, I thought it was BS at the time, and I'm not sure even to this day if it was something they had been smoking or drinking. Then around 2001 to 2002, I was leading some friends through the Sandy's trails. I used to like taking people out, even without a flashlight, tell them my dad's story just to freak them out. The girls were freaked out before we even got into the woods, so I decided not to scare them that night. In the river are small several islands connected by a small sliver of land. At that time, there were three such islands chained together, and I took them through to the last one, which was planted with pines and nice even rows. I was the first one back there, about 30 seconds ahead when one of the girls got her foot hung up on something. As I was going back to help her, there was a spot where the trees make a sort of roof effect which is really cool looking at night with the moon shining through. At that point, I saw something. I'm not sure what it was, but it sent me running out double time. When my buddy saw my face, he didn't say a word, he just followed both of us dragging the girls behind. When he asked me later why I came out in such a hurry, I told him it was because I thought I had seen something at the other end of the island walking through the trees that was very tall and not likely human. He may not have believed me, but he never questioned it either. I'm still not sure what I saw. It could have easily been that I scared myself with my dad's story and was seeing things, but I know this, I still don't like the dark, and even though I love hunting, I hate going out before the sun comes up during deer season. Benden, 2007 This sighting report is told second-hand by the brother-in-law of the witness. The witness is a prominent person in local government and wishes to remain anonymous. The situation started last Saturday night, around midnight when he was coming home from a friend's house in Benzonia and taking the back way home to Traverse City. He stated that while down Cinder Road, several miles outside of the town of Benden, he observed a pair of eyes reflecting off his headlights directly ahead of him. Thinking that it was probably a deer alongside of the road, he began to slow down. As he got closer, however, he stated that the object was much larger and much darker than a deer. He said that by this time, he had slowed to around 30 miles per hour and was at that point several hundred feet from the creature, which still had not moved. As he approached further, he stated that the only way he could describe the creature was being similar to a very large, dark wolf. However, he observed that this thing wasn't on four legs, but was upright, back two legs standing near a road-killed deer. He estimated that the creature stood a little over six feet tall and had very dark fur. He stated that, by now, he was going slow enough to bring his truck to a stop in the road and observe the creature which had not yet moved and was still staring at him. He told me that for a brief second, he believed that the object was a giant stuffed animal put there as some kind of a joke due to the fact that he had never seen anything like this in his life and that he was able to drive up on it as close as he was without it having moved an inch. 
He told me, however, that before he could finish that thought, the creature dropped to all four legs and sprinted across the road and disappeared into the woods on the other side of the roadway. He told me that he stayed frozen in his seat for a minute, wondering in the middle of the road at what the heck had just happened. I jokingly asked him if he had been drinking that night, and with a deadly serious face, he sternly stated, no, whatever that was, it was real. As perplexed as he was that night over what he had seen, he was deathly afraid to go wandering into the woods to investigate further. He said that in using a flashlight, he observed an animal's tracks leading into the woods on the opposite side of the road, and was fortunate enough that night to have his digital camera with him. He showed me a photograph of the paw print which he said appeared to be about 7 or 8 inches long. He had another picture of the same paw print where he had placed a shotgun shell in the middle of it for scale. He told me that he was lucky that the side of the road was so soft, because he wasn't willing to go any farther than two or three steps away from the door to his truck just to get a picture. I inquired if the animal had made any sounds before it disappeared, and he said that he did not hear it make any noise, and were it not for the picture, I inquired if the animal had made any sounds before it disappeared and he said that he did not hear it make any noise and, were it not for the picture, he would have thought that he had imagined the whole thing. I asked him if it could have been a bear and he stated, absolutely not. He bear hunts every year in the upper peninsula, so he obviously knows what bears look like up close. That's his story, believe it if you'd like. If I didn't know him as well as I do and hadn't seen pictures, I would have said that he was out of his mind. I've heard the song and know some of the stories, but always believed it was just for entertainment value. After this happened though, I am looking at all of this under a whole new light. I am an avid hunter. My name is Bo and I have hunted and fished all my life. I joined the army straight out of high school, and now I work six days a week. But enough about me. Y'all want to know what true nightmares are made out of. I have found out last October, hunting in New River, I had gotten up early that morning and cooked breakfast for my fiance. My fiance loves fried eggs in the morning, and I do them exactly like she likes. So we eat and I get my camo out of the bag, as well as my rifle, out of the cabinet. We headed out that morning, and I took my fiancé to work. Her work was on the way to New River. When we pull in, I give her a kiss and she tells me to bring her home something good. I told her I would, and I got back in my jacked up Chevy 2500. The trip to the mountain was as gorgeous as always and the Tennessee back roads are amazing and beautiful. So I got to my stand, but it was so eerily quiet that morning. Around noon, I decided to go to the truck and grab a sandwich and another bottle of water. So I eat a peanut butter and syrup sandwich my fiance made me while I was getting ready. She even had time to write me a note and basically said she loved me and was happy that we were together, since it was only one month out from having our little girl, and she was just an amazing old lady. After I got done, I decided to walk to the tree stand again. On my walk back, in the woods, I start to have this feeling of dread, that something is wrong, that something just isn't right. But I brush it off thinking maybe it's just nerves, since this is hog country after all and I have been chased on the road before that I'm walking on. But this just kept getting worse and worse. I started getting deeper down the ridge, closer to my stand, and I hear a twig break, and I stop. 
Now, me being an experienced hunter, I noticed movement in this thicket just about 50 or so yards away. I noticed this brown shape moving out towards me. So I crouched down, ready my rifle, and I train my rifle on the color. When I get to noticing that this thing is grunting, so I'm thinking, yes, a big buck. God, was I wrong. The thing slowly walked out closer and closer, and I realized that, wow, this creature's so massive, it's way bigger than a deer on all fours. So I'm thinking, okay, an elk is walking out. Cool. But I noticed its head and the shape is all wrong. It slowly starts walking out. All of a sudden, it stops and stands up. I mean, on two legs, it's easily eight feet tall, but because I'm 6'6", six, six, the thicket is just above my head, and this thing's almost a foot to two feet above it. it. It starts sniffing the air, and its head snaps right to my direction. I freeze up at that moment, feeling like I'm concreted to the ground. The wolf thing that I was looking at was beginning to let out this real, deep, almost demonic-like growl. It starts snarling, showing its teeth towards me. I, being army trained, realize if it charges, I'm only getting one shot at this thing, so I'd have to make it count. All of a sudden, it begins to tear through the bushes on all fours again. I realize the movie Van Halen's werewolf is charging at me at full speed. I realized I'm in big trouble and I hear this branch break behind me. I look over my shoulder and see that there is a second, larger wolf behind me on two legs. It is easily nine feet tall, built like a bodybuilder with jet black fur. It drops to all four and starts running full speed towards me, but this one was a lot closer. I spin around and see that this thing is too fast for me to unsafely shoot at with my rifle. I jump out of the way of this monstrous beast charging me. I end up hitting the hard rocks and slid into the red clay mud, just to realize it already crossed the roadbed I'd been walking on, and the two wolves are set on a collision course. When the bigger black wolf hits the lighter brown wolf, he tackles the brown wolf to the ground as they are rolling down the hill and clawing and biting and slamming each other into the hard ground. The smaller brown wolf kicks and paws from the bottom when its back claws rip the big black wolf's stomach wide open and throws him off onto the ground. The brown wolf then turns to me. It snarls and starts charging again at full speed. I am awestruck by the power of the wolf and the sheer size of it as it's on its way towards me. But the big black wolf slams the brown one from behind, running its arm through the brown one's side, picking it up and clamps its massive jaws on its shoulder as it throws the brown one down away from me. It lands and rolls about 10 yards and jumps up running away back through the brush. I let out the breath I didn't even realize I was holding in at that moment. I look at the now bloody and beaten ripped open black wolf, which is standing with blood dripping off its back claws and glistening white teeth, dripping with the blood of the brown wolf. And for some reason, it registers to me that I have to show that I am no threat to the king of the mountain. I lower the rifle down away from me, and as I do this, this thing smirks at me, lets out an ear shattering roar that turns into a howl. As it looks into my soul, I see the eyes of a beast, and I can understand that it was there to show it was the Alpha, and as long as I showed him respect, he will not be a threat. It turned to drop on all fours and ran away after the other. I instantly take off running. Luckily for me and the army, it allowed for me to stay in great shape. I take off up the ridge and make it to the truck. Soon as I get to the door, I realize there's blood all over the side of my truck. I hesitate to look, but I had to know. I flip the rifle safety off, 
ready to blast anything that jump up from the bed of the truck. I realize there is a big dead doe laying in the bed of my truck that has had its neck broken. I jump in, start the truck, spin it around, throwing gravel and two roster tails. I'm tearing ass out of the woods and I fly all the way down the mountain through the back roads and don't stop till I reach Denmer. My fiance can tell I'm shaken up, so she ends up taking me home. I tell her everything, but we decide to tell everyone that I hit the dough with my truck and I got spooked by it because who would believe me, right? That is till I got to hearing other people who have seen this massive animal as well. So I thought that this would be the best way for me to get the story off my chest and not get told I'm crazy or lying or making it up. I just wanted to warn every hunter and hiker around that we ain't the top of the food chain or the king of the mountain because the king of the mountain is a truly massive beast who has no predators. Thanks again for helping me get this off my chest. Now, let me tell you about my second encounter. I have the Bigfoot encounter where me and my fiance had seen that same wolf man. We have been going hunting in New River again. We have seen a family of Bigfoot for three or four years now. They have never been aggressive or anything like that. They show respect and are generally curious creatures. There is four Bigfoot in the area. The big male is jet black and about nine to ten foot tall. He looks like a jacked hair man. The second largest is a female, about eight foot tall, a light brown color with black stripes down her shoulders and back. The two smaller ones are between six and eight foot tall, both lighter brown. There is one male and one female juvenile. The young male is a dark brown with a light brown patch on his chest. The young female is a light golden brown and absolutely gorgeous in color. We usually see them all together as a family unit or the two males going out together. Looks as if hunting possibly because they have both been on the deer trails or the gravel and dirt roads to cross the area. They are all very curious. They have been known to walk up close within 50 yards or so, whooping and chirping to me and my fiance. We have had a blast seeing them and getting them used to us being in the area. We have built a cabin down in the holler of the ridge. This cabin in the woods is set next to a gorgeous place set between creek branches, but in a way that we can get a vehicle to the door. We started first seeing the male, and I was nervous because it isn't too far where I'd seen the two dogmen fighting originally. Shortly after we got to seeing the full family, they'd check out the truck or look in the windows at night to see if we were cooking. There for a while, my fiance was scared of them, and then she realized that they were just curious. It has been amazing to see the young ones playing around in the creek on hot summer days the big male lying in the cool mud, with the big female laid up in the shade while the two youngsters playing, splashing and rolling in mud, and even throwing mud. Once the young male ran up behind me while I was fixing a tree stand that was sitting in the bed of my Chevy 2500. He scared me with the loud steps running up behind me. Then he let out a rather strange whoop, almost as if he said boo. As he said woo, I jumped around, startled, and the young one was standing there, laughing like a little fat feller who would be holding his stomach, kinda like a backwoods Satan style laugh. I laughed at him and said you little shit. The big male walked up and grunted towards him. He waved and ran away. My fiance had stepped out on the porch when she had heard the sound and waited to see them some more since it's been the second time that morning that they'd been around. She's seen me and the big male standing only 10 yards away from each other. He dwarfed me. I seen her face and it showed she was nervous, if not scared. It was a bit shocking to see him so up close, to have been close enough to smell his musky aroma. Last weekend, I noticed he got a new open wound on his chest, 
it was four big claws down his burly, leathery chest. We left some fruit that was going bad out for him, so he could get to it a bit easier, so he'd heal up, because it showed me that he would protect the area. This weekend, we went up again, but didn't hear them or see them anywhere. I was honestly kind of worried that something happened to him, and that the family would be in trouble. So I kept looking for them that Friday night, not seeing them all night long. The next morning, my fiancé and I got up and had breakfast. We went hunting up the ridge just a ways and had a wonderful day together. We always have been side by side. Her love of hunting just made her so much more attractive to me. I honestly am the luckiest man in the world to have her as my partner. Saturday evening, we got back down to the camp, and we noticed something had been through the leaves all around the camp. It gave us a bit of hope that they're all okay. We had then gotten ready for supper, started cooking as the sun was setting. In New River, it gets pitch black dark in just a few moments. My fiancé had stepped out to the porch to go grab me a bottle of Jack out of the truck, and I heard the door open on the truck. I heard it slam as she came running through the door, and I drop everything, and I hurried to make sure that she's okay, and she was standing there saying that she thought our big male neighbor was coming up the creek bed towards us. So we decide to turn the camp stove down so we could step outside to watch him approach. So as we are standing there, I light a cigarette and hand it to my fiance. As I light my own, I realized he is walking kind of weird and not sounding good. His normal strong, crisp sounding grunts are sounding more deep and raspier. I take the bag of fruit out the back truck and we walk down closer to the creek bed. We creep back up the creek bank towards camp. As we are, the critter is coming closer to me, not knowing I stepped into a hole where one of the young ones had grabbed a clump of mud and thrown it. I hit the ground hard as I was stepping backwards, and I stood back up, quickly trying not to spook the Bigfoot with my pain groan. My fiancé turned and helped me back to my feet, but as she turned her back from the animal, my heart sank as I seen the deep pitch black wolf man that had won the fight before with the brown wolf. He starts picking up pace towards us, and in that moment, I jumped to my feet. I told my fiancé to run, that I'd hold it off as long as I could. Its massive body jumps through the creek, still at an incredible speed, and so I put myself between the beast and I and my old lady, the love of my life. I couldn't let anything happen to her, so I am putting myself in front. Charging him, yelling this primal roar I never knew I had from the deepest place of my soul. The wolfman breaking out of the water on a full sprint towards me, as I have gotten his attention now. I draw a bowie knife out of this sheath my grandfather had left over from the Vietnam War. At this moment, knowing I'm going to die as he would destroy me, all of a sudden, there is a roar from the top of the hill. Standing proud, the young female was roaring and beating her chest as the wolf stops. So do I to see the new creature trying to enter the fray. My fiancé stops on a dime, and she was staring at me with tears in her eyes as I realized that she has the hunting rifle from the bed of the truck. The wolf starts to snarl and growl. He realizes he's in trouble, and he bats me away, onto my back. My fiancé takes a shot and shoots him. The shot goes into the chest, but it barely grazes him. As my fiancé comes running up to me and having another gun with her, handing it to me. We realized that the young female and young male standing across the creek had started throwing rocks at the wolfman. I start backing up slowly towards my fiancé as the big male burst from the thicket and clears the creek in one jump and the massive male standing between us and the wolfman. He is roaring and beating his chest. The wolf then starts running again. The big male Bigfoot and the alpha wolfman hit into this devastating brawl. The wolf clawing and slashing the big male, proudly standing there. He grabbed the wolf by the throat and held him back 
as the two youngsters are pelting the wolfman with rocks. The male swinging its massive large arms down on the wolf and dropping it to its knees. But as that's going on, the wolf slashes the Bigfoot's legs, dropping him to his knees. The Bigfoot and Wolfman both being dropped to their knees, and as the Bigfoot hits its knees, it lets out a pained bellow. The Wolfman jumps on top of him. Then, one of the other Bigfoot swings a downed tree and smashes the Wolfman right in the head. As it flips backwards, she swings, breaking the log across its stomach. He jumps and runs away, the female making a delicate chirping and clicking as she kneels down to the male. The young ones across the creek to reunite with the two larger family members. My fiancé is running to my side, wrapping me in a hug and holding me, saying thank God. The big male getting his bearings standing up from the ground and about ten yards away from me. He looks at me and does this light chirping and clicking toward me cocking his head like a dog would, seeing if I was okay. The whole family standing there in front of us, while me, my fiancé, and the entire family of Bigfoot all let out this huge ringing roar together. It was kind of like a victory roar. Then they slowly make their way back up the hill to the top of the ridge where I believe their cave is located. Me and my fiancé head back to the cabin and get back inside she checks me out, wraps up my ribs as we load the truck in record time. We leave out of there in the jacked 2500 Chevy, fiancé holding my hand, saying that she's so proud of me and is just thankful that I'm okay, and we got to tearing down the mountain every bump, reminding me of my bruised ribs. I thanked her for coming back for me, and we get to the main road. She leans over, gives me a kiss, and we get the hell out of Dodge. Hey guys, What Lurks Beneath here. I hope you enjoyed this really cool Dogman vs. Bigfoot story. I know it might have been a little difficult to uh, listen through just because of how the story was sent in kind of shambles, so I had to slightly reformat it. But hopefully it's written in a way you can generally get the message across. Again guys, if you like my content, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, leave a comment, and I'll see you all in the next video. I have been hesitant on posting any story, mainly due to the fact I don't want anyone ever thinking that I, or the person that the story is about, is crazy. Although saying this actually happened sounds very cliche, but I can assure you the following stories are true. Now, before I begin the first story, just a bit of background on me. I am an intern for a church that does work on Navajo Reservation site, helping the community on people's homes, you know, like roofing repair, repainting, and interior fixing. Eight to five, with good pay and nice people, so overall, I'm happy with this. And as a bit of a disclaimer, I'm not trying to offend any Navajo tradition in any way. This is just a first-hand story on what is currently happening on my trip. Over the past two months of my internship, I have begun to grow fairly close with some of the residents on the res. One lady in particular that I got to know pretty well was the superstitious type. Like I said, never be outside at night or other random seeming things to me. But the biggest taboo I knew to never mention, mainly because I was told by my superiors, like said never be outside at night, or other random seeming things to me like that. But the biggest taboo I knew was to never mention, mainly because I was told by my superiors was Navajo folklore like skinwalkers. However, one day it was very different in the sense that the question was just burning within me. I was on my lunch break after wrapping up painting parts of her house, and she sits next to me on her porch, and we talk for a while, but
but I finally feel comfortable enough to ask her about any folklore, about werewolves, or anything of that sorts. I didn't really expect a response. I thought maybe she'd quickly say no, and then change the topic. But if anything, I was more scared I may offend her. But, to my surprise, she turns her head, looking toward the outside scenery. Hesitates, but then says, Yes, I know some, and I've experienced it too. She proceeds to tell me a description on the apparent equivalent to a werewolf. To paraphrase, she said, Werewolves look like normal people, but masked in white paint, covering their face, arms, and chest. Their whole body, as white as a corpse, covered with black symbols, quite possibly related to devil worshipping. More specifically, they are gravediggers and necromancers as well. They dig bodies up only to steal jewelry, although they may perform other acts to corpses as she quickly strayed away from going into too much detail about that. Werewolves also get their power from the devil. That is how they are able to possess such supernatural strength and endurance. I was surprised to hear this, although I figured werewolves wouldn't look anything like that in Twilight or Scooby-Doo maybe. Although deep down, even though I thought she sounded a bit crazy, before I could ask more questions about these werewolves, she began to tell me her own interaction with these supernatural beasts, and her story gives me chills. She explained that one day, her and her husband were driving on the curvy roads alongside the mountains only to find a woman with her face covered by her hands and was kneeling in the middle of the road, appearing as though she was crying. The woman looks up towards the car's headlights to reveal the very same white paint and sacrificial symbols mentioned previously. Her husband honked his horn and quickly slams on the brakes, only to be too late, and hears the loud cracking sound of the woman's bones and the splash of blood all over the windshield. Once her and her husband stop the car safely and processed what the hell just happened, they quickly run over to the spot where they hit the woman. However, once they reached the spot, there was no body. But not only that, there was no trace of blood either. Just as a side note, this part of the res had some cliffs, but it was relatively flat land, so it would be obvious to tell where someone is especially if they just got hit by a car. Puzzled by what the possible explanation could be for this odd occurrence, her and her husband drove back home trying to neglect the thought that they had just witnessed a werewolf. However, being the non-paranormal believers they were at the time, they tried to just close this occurrence off as them just losing their minds. As interesting as her story was, this got me thinking, is it possible for this werewolf story to be true? Or is this her own way of describing a skinwalker or other supernatural phenomenon because she didn't think I knew what a skinwalker was? This question just kept circulating through my head. So as you could expect, the following nights made it harder for me to sleep comfortably. Because of that, during the work days I would feel more and more mentally drained, almost paranoid. At the end of the week, around 6, I was sitting in the car, driving back to the church site, and was in the mental state of mind where I was half awake and half asleep. My buddy was driving and claimed that he wanted to pull over to the gas station that was near the church just to grab a couple of snacks to munch on during our debrief time in our cabin. Since I was too tired to argue, I said fine and laid my face against the window and tried to doze off while waiting for my friend. However, I had the weirdest feeling that I was being watched. So naturally, I opened my eyes and looked out the window. I saw nothing. However, when I turned my head, out of the corner of my eye, I thought I saw a white figure, just as the woman described previously. I looked back and nothing was there but I swear I saw something. Since it was beginning to get darker outside, I quickly sat up in my seat to readjust my vision, 
but when I looked back out the window, it was almost as though the figure had vanished. Perplexed, I stepped outside the car and looked around, but there was no trace of a creature even existing. My buddy comes back to the car and questions what the hell I was doing, debating on whether or not I should tell him. I decided to just say, oh, I'm just getting some fresh air, let's head out. The following days have been even worse for me. My mood is getting worse. I'm feeling way more paranoid that something is out there. And at night, I could almost swear that I hear a scream in the distance. Everything outside just looks a hundred times scarier too, because there's barely any outside lights besides the moon. So everything has more of an exaggerated appearance. But believe me, I know I sound crazy. But the worst part is that if I tell anyone, they'll think I'm crazy too. So I've been debating whether or not I actually saw the werewolf that the lady described, or if it was just my tired eyes maybe playing tricks on me. I hope someone can find some sort of answer to this werewolf mystery. Also, if you have any similar paranormal stories like this, please share. I'm trying my best to be more aware about this, and if I find anything in the future, I will update you on my encounters or any other odd discoveries. Hi, I just wanted to write in to you about an experience I've had recently with these so-called dogmen. It's really changed my way I view the world and nonetheless terrifying. I feel like once you run into these things, it draws them to you. This happened to me just back in spring, back in it was still pretty wet outside and hadn't really gotten hot just yet. I live out in a much more rural area of the world. We have roughly 94 acres surrounding us, full of timber, thick brush, and a big creek that runs throughout. I was on my way back one night from a friend's party to my house, when I began to feel a strange feeling pulling up into my house. Now, quick note before I go into any further details, when I was a little kid, we had a poltergeist at the house I grew up at. A very aggressive poltergeist that caused a lot of harm to my parents and I. I remember I would always know when it was in the room with me because I could feel the evil presence of this thing. This is the same evil presence I felt around my house. I sat there in the car looking around. Things felt different. I wasn't quite sure what was going on. But whatever this was felt different. I slowly got out of my car and began walking towards the door carefully. It was fairly dark outside considering it had been long after sundown. I don't remember the exact time. Before my hand could reach the handle to put the key in, I heard a deep, low guttural growl. I froze in place, slowly looking over my shoulder in the direction that it came from. It was nothing like anything I had ever heard before, but it did sound canine-like. It reminded me of a huge wolf, especially after growing up in the woods and hearing various animal noises. The growl continued on for a few seconds. I was so scared I was fumbling with the keys. It really felt like I was dropped into an 80s horror film. I really did think I was going to die right there on the spot. I was sure any second the thing making this sound was going to pounce upon me and devour me whole, right where I stood. The growl sounded as though the creature was standing only feet away from behind my car. I refused to look out of fear of what I would see. It sounded so close. Whatever it was had to have been humongous. The base alone in its growl, I could feel it throughout my entire body. I have never been so afraid until a few moments later when I began to hear heavy, slow steps coming towards me. It was moving in quickly. I know because its strides had to have been enormous with how close it had gotten to me so quickly. By the time I plunged my keys in and had turned them and opened my door, this thing had to have been directly behind me. Once I was inside, 
I have no idea what was behind me because I simply never looked, and I refused to. I never heard any sounds the rest of the night. I've lived in this house for a few years now and haven't felt any weird feelings or seen anything out of the ordinary. I've tried to look online for anything, and everything seems to point me in the direction of what's called the dogman, just based off the growling and the horrible feelings of fear. I wasn't doing anything out of the ordinary that night either. When I had left my home in the evening, all was fine and quiet, as it usually is. With 94 or so acres surrounding you, you often hear a lot of wildlife and the occasional deer, but I've never felt anything like what I did that night. I've never seen anything weird out in the wilderness, nor have I heard anyone encountering anything strange. Like I said before, I've lived at this property a few years and we do get a lot of critters out here, but not what that thing was. There ain't nothing big enough out here to growl as loud as that thing sounded. I swear it could have been the size of a moose. Its presence alone terrified me, but what really scares me is how helpless I felt. It's like it was letting me know that it could have easily gotten me, and there is nothing I could have done. I felt like it left a mark on me. I don't know how to explain it. So, I was throwing some rotten tomatoes close to the tree line because I'm too lazy to walk down there and dump them. I threw one that came close to hitting the trees, and that's when I saw movement about five feet above the ground. Not really leaves or branches moving, more like a shadow moving if that makes any sense. I stood completely still and just listened to what I thought was breathing. I thought maybe it was possibly wind doing something weird going through the leaves, but to me it sounded like breathing. I continued to stand there, focusing on the spot where the shadow had moved, and saw what looked like a pointy ear, not ears. I couldn't see the other half. First thought was that it looked like a big dog, but from what I could see, which wasn't much, I threw the final bad tomato in that direction and saw the shadow move quickly back, followed by two to three heavy steps, and that's it. I just stood there thinking, nah, I'm just tired from work, go to bed. This happened about four weeks ago, shortly before my vacation. While on my vacation, I kept thinking about what the hell that was and tried to do some quick research while relaxing poolside and kept coming across dogman sightings. Upon my return, nothing more has happened. No shadows, no moving, no growling, or any other stuff people report when encountering this thing. I don't really know what to think. I'm hoping if it was something, it moved on. I work full time and do a lot of side projects and have kids in sports, so I'm pretty much a walking zombie. I still just can't shake that feeling that what I saw was just not my imagination. If anything, I will set up some game cams and I guess have some deer hunting, and possibly an audio recorder. I know it's kind of lengthy, but I just needed to get this off my chest and maybe get some advice from anyone out there who has experienced something similar. If it was just me living here, I wouldn't really care about just one measly encounter, but my boys, they play outside, and I really wouldn't want anything to happen to them, knowing that something this size is potentially roaming around. I had stayed at my friend's place by Lansing for a couple of weeks and decided to take off and head towards the shore of Lake Michigan, up through Petoskey and over the Upper Peninsula. It was dark by the time I got to Pentwater, a small resort town on the shore of Lake Michigan in the western part of the state. I was kind of confused at a stop sign and lurched to a stop, started and stopped, I looked up and there was a police officer, stopped over to my right. I decided to make a right turn and then turn into a neighborhood. I made my way back to the main road and took a right. As I turned back on the main road, 
I saw a small hill going up into a wooded area on the left. I saw some sort of animal in the grassy area between the road and the trees. I thought to myself, oh cool, I'm going to see some wildlife, like a possum or a badger or something. But as I got near it, it seemed to move in a very unnatural way for an animal like that. Sort of too fast and too jerky as it ran to the side, and then down the hill. It appeared to be brown and reddish tobacco colored and furry. It looked much larger, too. More like a human size. After I passed it, I looked up in my rearview mirror. The animal had stood up on its hind legs and ran across the street, leaning over with its front arms hanging down. Classic werewolf-type horror movie pose. I had been planning on camping out in that area, but now, no way. I drove over two hours before I stopped after that. I am an outdoorsman. I am very experienced in hunting, camping, hiking, and general survival. I am very familiar and used to all kinds of wildlife, and I was charged by what I believe was a cryptid called the Dogman. It charged me and my cousin. It was not a bear. A bear cannot move how it did, and it was not a normal wolf, as they can't comfortably run on two legs, whereas what charged us seemed natural at doing that. I can elaborate further if you wish. This happened back around June or July of 2007, I believe. I was around 17 years old and more cocky then, but still somewhat knowledgeable of the outdoors around me. My family used to own a cabin in northwestern Wisconsin. I basically grew up there in the summer. I knew the woods well, but at night it was wise to stay in the cabin, or at least by the bonfire by the beach, just because of bears, wolves, and cougars. One of the creepiest things was, if you were having a bonfire, the tree line was visible from the fire pit and beach, and at night, you always felt like you were being watched from that tree line. But during the day, the woods always seemed normal, not so creepy at all. That is, until this incident. So this happened somewhere between midnight and three in the morning. Me and my cousin were having an airsoft battle. I was in full woodland camo. He was not. I retreated onto the ATV trail into the woods for a tactical advantage, and our battle took us about 200 meters in, to about a third of the way up the trail. We had enough at this point and were standing at the edge of a clearing on the trail, talking, and he was maybe 10 feet from me, when I decided to mess with him. I shushed him and said, We're being watched. He froze. Then. I realized the woods were dead quiet, and I got spooked and started scanning the tree line and the other edge of the clearing from left to right when I saw it. Its teeth gave it away. It was panting and staring at my cousin. I don't expect you to believe me, but what I saw was a wolf as big as a black bear, at least 300 pounds. But it wasn't normal. This wolf was on two legs, crouching next to a tree with its arm grasping the tree, grasping with a clawed hand. It had reddish-brown fur. I told my cousin that we have to go, and the next thing I know he is sprinting, and I look back at Wolfie, who had locked on and sprinted a few steps on two feet, and then I turned and I ran when it looked like Wolfie was dropping to all fours. This thing charged us and sounded right on our asses barreling through the brush. But for whatever reason, let us go when we broke out of the tree line and headed for the cabin. What stuck with me the most was the sheer size. Wolfie appeared to be nearly seven feet tall when upright, and that where it should have had the front paws, it appeared to have large clawed hands. Now I'm not sure how to explain it away rationally. I have heard wolves will occasionally kind of walk upright, but... As far as I know, they can't sprint on two legs, nor do wolves even get that big, 
and black bears more waddle on two legs. The closest description is silly. A werewolf or dogman. Thank you for reading. Like, I believe my town has something like 247 people in it. Everybody knows everybody. Weird things have happened before, like animals being slaughtered or going missing, you know, that sort of thing. Naturally, we chalked it up to coyotes or other critters. See, I'm an avid hunter, so I was heading out to the woods with my bow, a fully decked out Matthew's Creed. I got out a little earlier than usual, so it was still pretty dark. I've never minded the woods before, so all I planned on doing was relaxing in my stand for a while, as I didn't feel like stalking today. It's not too far away from daylight, so the birds and other wildlife are starting to make their morning calls. Usually pretty peaceful, right? I swear to God, in the span of a second, everything in that patch of woods shut up at the exact same time. Dead silence. It didn't even try to be subtle. That alone scared the piss out of me. So naturally, my scared self froze and just listened for anything. My first thought was, Oh shit, something's out here with me. Which freaked me out even more. Then I started to think maybe it was just a bear. Or a bobcat. Which was still terrified to meet up with, but at least gave me a logical answer. I figured I could hear a bear coming, but I knew big cats were renowned for stalking people without their knowing which scared the daylight out of me. I decided to keep moving towards my stand, post up, and just point my bow down the tree. After what seemed like forever, I freaking made it. I shuffled up the stand, pulled out my knife, just in case, and just listened. Dawn was definitely breaking now, which made me feel much better. Still though, no sounds of wildlife, which was getting more and more eerie by the second. Now, my stand is perched on the side of a creek. The creek wasn't very deep, like maybe to the top of your ankle. About the only sound I could hear was the slight noise of running water. Then I hear something to my right, and it is running fast. I instantly raise my bow and wait, shitting my pants in the moment. It's getting louder and louder and closer. I almost screamed when I saw this bastard. It literally looked like something out of the movie Dog Soldiers, only a little bit more muscular. This thing busted through the brush, ran down the slope, and through the creek, then disappeared on the other side. I've seen some stuff, let me tell you, but I was shaking like a newborn baby. I didn't ease off my drawstring for like 10 minutes, which... For those of you who don't know, is an incredibly long time to hold the bow, FYI. I mean, this thing was huge. Like 6'5 to 7'5, 250 pounds of just no. And I've seen bears and the like before. They do not run like that. Anyway, after that, the sun really started to show and the birds began chirping again. I had calmed myself down after a while, so... I noped out of there in a hurry. While I was terrified at the time, it's definitely going to be one of my coolest memories to look back on. I'm just going to move my stand and hopefully hunt elsewhere. My name is Ronald. I'm 20 years old and I live near a small town in Wayne County, West Virginia. My family and I originally lived in Jacksonville, Florida during my childhood, but we eventually moved up north because we couldn't handle the humidity and oncoming hurricanes. Now, what I'm about to tell you guys is 100% true, and I swear upon my life that what I've experienced is something I will never forget. It was last autumn, on August 27th, 2017, when my experiences first began. It was a Saturday evening, between 6.30 and 7.30 p.m., I think it was. I was driving home from taking an incredibly long drive. 
I drove from my home to the town of Wayne, then past Tulsa and Louisa, and finally as far as Chapmansville. I guess I drove way too far for my liking. Anyway, it was getting dark and eventually found my way home in the form of a road called 8th Street that led me to Mount Union Road. It was the road that took me straight to the house of one of my dad's friends, Ezra, where there was this road called Walnut Gap Road, and that was where it takes me home. Now, on this road, there's a blind curve next to an old abandoned white church, in which I always slow down on before driving around the curve, just to make sure nobody was going to come flying around the corner that night. Now, right as soon as I do that, there's a six-foot ledge on the left side of the road where some small trees have fallen over, whereas on the other side, there's a steep hillside that has a path cleared through the thick underbrush where deer like to hide in. And right at that same spot is where my first encounter happened. Just as I slowly drove around the corner, I saw this thing step onto the road on all fours. When I first saw it, I thought it was a 500-pound male black bear because it was roughly the same size as one, and we do tend to have a few roaming around where I currently live. But then I noticed that it was actually more like a wolf because it had a long bushy tail and pointed ears and a canine-like snout and the same body shape as a wolf with jet black hair and glowing amber-colored eyes. By the time it stepped out onto the road, the wolf had turned its head towards my direction and stared right at me. I was ecstatic at first to actually see a wolf in the wild, but... At the same time, I realized that there was something rather off about this thing, about my encounter. There shouldn't be a wolf out there this big. In fact, the more I think about it, there shouldn't even be any wolves out here in West Virginia anymore, since the timber wolves that once lived in these woods were killed off. Was the state government secretly using conservation efforts to repopulate wolves here in the state? Did a pack of wolves escape from a wildlife sanctuary and somehow found their way here? If so, then how did this get so freaking huge? Not only did the wolf's abnormal size catch my attention, so did the look in its eyes. They looked different from what I've seen in the eyes of any canine I know of. They looked much more intelligent than anything of any animal I've seen. Whatever theory I've had to support any rational explanation for this unusual sighting were immediately shot away when this creature did something that I'll never forget for the rest of my life, something that still haunts my very soul to this day. When we both stared at one another, even while I'm inside of my car, I heard what sounds like bones popping loudly, and to my absolute shock, I watched this wolf place its hand on top of my car hood, raise itself off the ground, and stand up on two legs. Yeah, you heard me right. It wasn't a paw it placed on my car hood. It was a hand. When the wolf stood up and my headlights hit it square on, that's when I got a really good look at this thing. It was easily eight feet tall, easily, and weighed roughly around 600 to 650 pounds or more. As I said, it was covered in jet black hair that seemed quite feral in my opinion, as if it hasn't been cleaning himself that much. And it also had a long bushy tail and two glowing amber yellow eyes. To my shock, it was more than a wolf standing on its hind legs. It had a human-like torso from the waist up that appeared pretty muscular with broad shoulders and long forearms, longer than those of normal human beings. I could see the muscles of this wolf man pulsating with each breath it took, especially with the headlights lighting it up. It also had these dexterous hands that looked almost like raccoon hands, but with more elongated fingers and long jet black claws at each fingertip. They looked like they could be used to easily manipulate any kind of prey in its clutches, and they looked like they could easily rip me to shreds. 
Or maybe they can do more than just that. The hind legs resembled more of those of a dog or a wolf. They were haunched. This I can easily tell you because they bent backwards and had these massive paws for feet. From the looks of which it was standing on its toes more than its feet. It had a massive head similar to that of a wolf or a large German shepherd, but much bigger in proportion with pointed ears and tufts of fur at the tip of each ear, as well as a long muzzle with these great, big fangs gouging out at the front of its snout. To be honest with you, the fangs had a very eerie resemblance to those of a saber-toothed cat, but the rest of it just looked like a werewolf. But the eyes, the eyes were the one thing, the only thing about my encounter that night that I'll never forget, and even writing about it to you all right now sends a bone-chilling fear down my spine. As I've said to you prior, the eyes looked extremely intelligent, far smarter than any animal I've come to know in my neck of the woods, but they also held a feeling that told me I was looking into the eyes of something that just spelled evil out of them. Finally, I gained this overwhelming sense of dread after seeing it walk to my side of the car on two legs, slowly bent down to level its eyes with mine and I froze in pure, unadulterated terror when it used its hand to jiggle the door handle to try and open my car door. Fortunately, all the doors to my car were locked, and every window was closed. But this still horrified me to a point where I couldn't even breathe. This wolfman, as I previously referred to it as, gave out a grunt and actually frowned at me for a few seconds before standing back and walking to the other side of my car, and it jiggled the other door handle adjacent to the passenger side. Whatever this thing was, it was intelligent enough to know what a doorknob, or in this case, a door handle is for. At this point, I was absolutely shaking in my seat with the same fear still latched onto my soul. Have you ever been through an experience in your life where even though you've known all your life that you're an apex predator, you find yourself going out into the wilderness alone, and you suddenly feel so weak, so vulnerable, so helpless in the eyes of such a beast like this? That's exactly how I felt in the time of my encounter. I felt like this thing, a creature that shouldn't even exist, yet was standing right there in front of my car, was the true ruler of the forest and we humans were nothing compared to what it can really do. It could have easily ripped the doors off my car and pulled me out. It could have caught up to me if I tried to escape, and even if I tried to scream for help, it wasn't going to help me because I knew how powerful this predator was, even if I didn't know it yet. Just by looking at the wolfman, I knew a human being wouldn't have stood a chance, and I knew that it knew that I knew. I honestly thought I was going to die, that my family and my friends would never see me again, that they would never know what was happened to me, or how I was killed or eaten alive by something that nobody else believes exists, and that there was nothing I could do about it. However, none of that ever happened. It was as if God himself was watching over me that night, protecting me from the malevolent beast that was circling me. Instead of attacking me head on, the wolfman bared its teeth at me and let out an extremely deafening snarl before walking around the front side of my car, crossing the road on its hind legs in just two steps. The encounter didn't end there though. By the time it crossed the road, it paused for a couple of seconds before it slowly turned around to look at me one last time. As soon as it did that, I could have sworn right then and there that it wasn't alone. I looked over its shoulders and I could see multiple pairs of eyes staring directly at me. I knew they were of the same creature as the first one because they held the same eye shine and gave off the same growls. I estimate that I saw at least five other pairs of eyes staring at me. Three of them were low on the ground on all fours. The other two were standing upright, but they didn't reveal themselves out of the darkness like the first one did. In my opinion, 
I think he might have been the alpha male of his pack. If you all think encountering one werewolf-like creature was terrifying enough, imagine how I felt when I saw there was more than one. With that scary thought, I snapped out of my trance and decided to get the hell out. I slammed hard on my accelerator, and I bolted away and drove out of there like a bat out of hell. I'm not pulling your leg here, but the distance from right where I was when I saw those things to my home, I literally arrived home and pulled into the garage in just one minute. By the time I arrived, I was in tears. I've never felt that scared before in my entire life, and not only that, that was the first time I've cried that much in a long time. My parents were concerned about the state I was in and asked me what had happened. I basically told them everything that transpired just before I pulled in. Now, I may have made up different stories and stuff before, but that was only when I was little, and whatever I've experienced wasn't a joke. I told them the whole truth with honesty, but terror in my voice. But, of course, they didn't believe me. They just assumed what I saw could have been a black bear, and driving after dark like that makes your mind play tricks on you. But this wasn't a trick I saw. I was 19 at the time, but I respected the DUI, so I wasn't drunk while driving home that night. I wasn't dreaming off this incident, nor was I hallucinating it. It wasn't even a simple misidentification. I know what I saw, and there's no doubt in my mind that it was real. After this encounter, it's affected me so much that I was forced to isolate myself from everybody I know, including my family and friends. For a little over a month or two, but I eventually broke out of my shell and got back into my social life again. However, I took this time to do some intense research on what I saw, and that's when I came upon the dogman phenomenon for the first time. According to several eyewitness testimonies, people have reported seeing the exact same creature all over the U.S. and even in some remote parts of the world. This in turn filled me with relief, knowing that I wasn't alone, that there are people out there who swear on their lives and even to this day and what they saw out there were real. They're not a haunting part of humanity's imagination like we all believe them to be. Monsters do exist in this world, and this fact alone makes us realize how small our world really is. To me, it makes me wonder that if a pack of werewolf-like creatures can exist, then what else could be out there lurking in the shadows, watching us with intelligent eyes, waiting for us to prove their existence in man's world? So, this is the first time I'm actually sharing this experience with anyone, and it's taken me quite a while to be able to tell it, because ever since it happened, I haven't been the same. I don't sleep as well, I have constant nightmares, and have been generally getting more ill, and just being traumatized. My brother as well, with whom it occurred. Last summer in July, I was visiting my brother, who happens to live in northern Michigan, in a town called Rapid City. The place itself is pretty close to the Traverse State Forest area, in which a long road runs through it, called Supply Road. This road has thick forests and brush on both sides with occasional farms. We had went down south, to a lake which is only about a 30 minute drive from where he lived at the time. He wanted to show me around the area and the lake itself and have some fun with photography. It was about 9pm when we finally decided to call it a day, and it was pretty dark at this point anyway. On the way back, we're both like, eh, fuck it. Let's drive through the Traverse State Forest area for a more scenic route, even though it is out of the way. We both loved the woods and going through scenic routes, and I loved getting to see new parts of Michigan. As we pulled onto Supply Road, it didn't seem more than seven or so minutes before we had our experience with whatever the hell it was we saw. Going north on this road, on the left side of the road is about 10 or so feet of clearing with just dirt and grass before it hits thick brush and trees. It was a little after 9pm at this point and 
as we're driving, said Simon in the passenger seat. I noticed this large black-like dog on the side of the road, but something wasn't right. It looked like it was crouched down, just as a human being would, waiting to jump out or something. It wasn't looking over in our direction, but you could tell its head was absolutely canine-like. As we got closer and the lights actually started to shine on it, it immediately turned its head towards and stood up as it made this horrible hissing sound. I don't know how else to describe it. Both my brother and I turned sheet white at this point and had slammed on our brakes. About 30 feet away from us on the side of the road standing was this... I don't even know what to call it. I want to say werewolf because that's the only thing that really describes what it looked like. Maybe it was a skinwalker. I don't know. This beast had piercing, sharp yellow eyes that for some reason didn't reflect at all when the lights hit them. But they almost, just almost, seemed to glow on their own, which was creepy in and of itself. This thing had a longer snout and very pointed ears and was massive. When it hissed at us, you could see how sharp and massive its teeth were and how fast it stood up and scared us both as we had startled this thing. It honestly looked like something out of a horror movie and if CGI actually looked real. We had our windows rolled down the way home and we smelled what I can only describe as if you mixed garbage, decaying flesh, and wet dog together. We didn't really smell it until after it had stood up, and we had slammed on our brakes. This thing was about eight or nine feet, I would say, with a humongous build. This thing wasn't bulky per se, but it was big, and was extremely lean. It looked like an extremely masculine and lean human male body. I didn't see any genitalia. This thing was very shaggy and hairy, with finger-like claws, like pretty much you'd see in a typical werewolf movie. I didn't get a chance to stare at the feet or anything, as I was motionless, staring. We only got to stare at it for what seemed like a few seconds before it let out this horrible scream that shook me and my brother to the core. It immediately started to pace towards our truck aggressively, with its claws outstretched and baring its teeth, as if ready to kill. Me and my brother screamed at the top of our lungs, and he floored it as hard as he could. He literally sped all the way home, and we didn't say a word the rest of the way. We didn't sleep at all that night, and I haven't been the same person ever since. What I saw that night terrified me so bad, and I'm sharing this with people because I hope they can educate themselves and know what's out there. If you do encounter this, get help, and don't fear or worry about people ridiculing. This is something that happened to my husband and I a good nine or so years ago. We had gone to watch a friend's band play and were headed home from downtown Dallas. I don't live in the metropolis any longer, so not personal info. It was around one in the morning, but we still had plans before I was expected home. So we headed to his apartment in one of the South Dallas suburbs. This is a pretty well populated suburb but by the time we got close to his apartment, the roads were pretty much empty. We exited the highway and turned onto the street that led to his apartment. But as soon as we passed the traffic light under the highway, we both saw it, plain as day. Stone cold sober and wide awake, we both saw a mother effing werewolf type creature exit a neighborhood street and calmly run in about four steps across a four-lane road. It was about 75 yards in front of us, but it wasn't exactly the way I'd imagine a werewolf. It was entirely canine. No human features at all, except for the fact that it was on two legs. The legs were massive, and the thing was about seven feet tall, but the arms reminded me of a T-Rex. They were small and clung to the dog or creature. They seemed very useless if the thing were trying to attack something. The head was also odd, besides being a typical dog color, so grayish black. The eyes were bright glowing yellow. 
even when there weren't headlights shining directly in them. It didn't look like the glow an animal gets from lights in their eyes anyway. But the thing that stood out to me the most was that the eyes were biocular like a fish. I saw the eyes clearly even though he was completely profiled to us. The road we were driving on had heavy trees to the right hand side of us. When it came out, it was running but crossed this road in just a few steps. It was big enough and effortlessly fast enough to know that a human couldn't have dressed up and done this. There was an open field that it ran into. When my husband and I got to where the trees broke, we both turned our heads to look, but it was long gone by then. I think the only thing that was said was a quiet, what the hell, by me. More about what this thing looked like though, it was more menacing than it you could ever imagine. But to be honest, much less scary than what I would imagine a werewolf to look like. When it was running across the road, I didn't get the sense that it cared that we saw it, or that it was even trying that hard to cross before we got closer. I didn't feel fear as if we were threatened. Only a disbelief, really. And again, it's not like we were in a rural area by any stretch of the imagination. When we passed the tree line, his apartment complex was literally another 150 yards or so up the road. We hurried in and didn't exactly get to our plans. We basically just sat there in silence, trying to rationalize, I guess. Still to this day, I often think to myself, I mean really, did this really happen? But as soon as I close my eyes and I think about it, those bright yellow eyes are still there and they will never go away. I lived in a cottage in the woods in central Sweden for a few years. And late one night in the spring, I went outside to get firewood and heard something terrible. Growling, snarling, barking, gnashing of teeth. Something tearing through underbrush, snapping trees. I hadn't seen the movie at the time, but it was like the troll from the Norwegian film Troll Hunter. I grabbed my hatchet and ran downhill to the middle of my front yard to activate the motion-sensing floodlights that cast light across the whole yard and across the field to the woods on the far side, maybe 50 to 75 meters away. The sounds quieted, then resumed and increased in intensity, with roars and growls and more destruction. I saw saplings shake along the edge of the woods, as whatever it was approached. I slid my hand up the hatchet head so I would be ready to strike in a panic rather than using a more powerful and effective grip at the base of the handle. I also prepared to run back to the house. All of a sudden, a gray thing streaked out of the woods, loudly snarling. It was headed in a wide arc for the barn slash woodshed where the light was mounted. I started backpedaling, still gripping the hatchet tightly. It moved so fast I could hardly react. Within two of my steps, it had crossed the field, jumped a ditch, and passed between me and the barn, raced alongside it. It then crashed into the double-layered chicken wire fence of the chicken fen and disappeared behind the barn. I could hear more snarling and growling and underbrush noises as it continued on its rampage further and further away. Then I noticed another similar source of noise in the woods, where this one came from. Moving through the woods on an interception course to the first monster thing, it too faded into the distance. How big was this thing? About as big as a medium to small dog. Its diminutive size compared to the volume and pitch of the sounds it was making was a huge surprise. In the poor lighting situation I had, it was very difficult to tell anything about the color, but I think it was mainly gray, with maybe a little bit of brownish tint. Hello. This is a 100% real encounter that I had one night. The encounter to this day still freaks me out a little bit. I'll bite the experience was short. This took place in Mira Loma, California. 
It happened about 13 years ago, when I was 17. I lived near a forested area, near a highway above a hill. I was never the type to be scared easily. I'm not religious or superstitious, or anything like that to start things off. I generally keep to myself, and I always described myself as a strong, silent type. I tend to notice environmental changes in my surroundings more than most people and keep on my own toes. Anyway, the experience was short and occurred roughly at 2 a.m. at night. It happened in front of my house while most people were sleeping. I, being the nocturnal person I am, decided to go in front of my house and run laps back and forth from my house back to the chain link fence that went up the hill. It was about 100 feet back and forth, and I normally ran about 50 of these laps before I'd go back in. It wasn't a full moon that night. In fact, from what I remember, it was pitch dark, and there was an eerie feeling in the air. There was livestock in the area, and coyotes would come around once in a while, and I was familiar with all the sounds of the night or so I thought. During my quick exercise routine, I was suddenly stopped by a sound that still sends chills down my spine to this day. I heard what sounded like a low pitch, but the source indicated that the animal making the sound was big and wolf-like. It struck me with fear and dread as I stopped running completely, cowering behind the car on the driveway. I thought perhaps it might have been a horse that resides around the property, making a weird noise, but then I heard it again, below the hill in the darkness. No, this was not a horse or wild pig, nor a coyote, at least to my knowledge. The sound of this low, blood-lusted growl was unlike anything I had ever heard, and I felt like it was targeting me. I normally do not feel scared, but in that moment... I couldn't muster any courage to take a peek down the hill. An instinct within me said do not do it or you would regret it. I heard it again and I knew it was aware of my presence. I was so curious to know where the sound was coming from, but the other part of me said to run towards the house and hide in your room. I felt the instinct to save myself was greater than curiosity, so I backed towards my door and hid in my room until daylight. I told the story to people, and they didn't believe me, or that I let my imagination run wild. But I know that whatever it was, it made me feel real fear, and that feeling doesn't happen to me often. A year or two later, I watched a movie that I felt really recreates the sound well, An American Werewolf in London. I still get nightmares just thinking about the sound it made. I know that it wasn't a farm animal or a coyote. Otherwise, I'm sure I'd have overcame my fear to get closer and examine the sound, but I know I'll never know for sure. So, when I was younger, 16 or 17 I think, I had an encounter with something strange in the forests near Danbury, Wisconsin. Background on me is that I'm 6'4 and athletic. I'm a hunter, camper, and martial artist, generally a survivalist. I was naive and didn't give nature the proper level of respect and basically was a cocky teenager who felt invincible. Our cabin had been on Long Lake in Wisconsin. The whole area is forested for the most part. I was there on vacation with my cousin and grandparents. It was a nice and hot summer day, and we had decided to play airsoft. At the time, I took airsoft very seriously. I wore a full BDU woodland with a camouflage mask even. My cousin just wore jeans and a shirt. We had a battle which I took into the woods where I felt comfortable. We were about 150 meters into the forest when we stopped. Then I decided to tease my cousin. I shushed him and said, We're being watched. Jokingly, of course. Unfortunately, it turned out to not be much of a joke 
because I immediately then noticed that the woods were dead quiet, which only happens when a large predator is around. I was on edge very quickly. Next, the feeling of being watched hit me so hard, I started scanning the surrounding area. Then, I saw it. The whitish teeth gave it away. What I saw was at the edge of a clearing about 40 meters from us, crouched and holding onto the tree with its left hand. It was panting and watching us with its ears up. It had reddish brown hair and looked canine-like. In my head it clicked as a werewolf. I said to my cousin, we have to go, and he bolted. I still had my eyes on it when my cousin started sprinting. The creature then charged, but it ran on two legs for maybe 10 feet, then dropping to all fours. I turned and sprinted. I could hear it crashing through the woods behind us. Once back at the cabin, we discussed it, but it's still unclear if my cousin saw it. I told him I thought it was a bear, not to freak him out, but... I know bears and it wasn't a bear. I started doing research on these things after my encounter which brought me to many dogman related websites and forums. What I saw coincides with other people's sightings. I am now far better about respecting nature and I am extremely cautious with forests. If I go into nature alone, I am always armed, but I prefer to not be alone. Remember those that are listening. Always trust your senses. I met my best friend Ben when I was only 19. We started a degree in music together and had absolutely nothing in common, which we loved about each other. What shocked us was how in sync our childhoods had been. From being born two weeks apart to the age of 12, we shared a lot of experiences, even though we never met. I remember him telling me about a VHS he used to have with Huxley Pig and Quack Quack cartoons on it, saying how obscure it was and how I'd love it. I replied that I knew exactly which VHS he was referring to and also still had a copy of it. This sort of thing happened a lot between us, so we liked to quiz each other from time to time. One night, when I was staying over at his house, we got on the topic of kids' ghost stories. I love creepy stories, but Ben hates them, so the conversation was slow. We started the usual stories in the neighborhood spread. It was funny how many of our own town stories were actually the same for being opposite sides of the city and river, 10 miles from each other. The dilapidated places were always haunted. We had both heard about a one-eyed black cat nobody owns that watches kids play outside. The list of stories went on and on, as did the similarities. Ben got surprisingly into the discussion. So have you ever heard of this one story, etc. To which I confirmed or told my town's slightly different version of the story. That's how the night progressed. After we exhausted the conversation, he ended with, even to this day, I'm still scared of dogmen, so please tell me you've heard about that. I profoundly remember being dumbfounded, saying I had no idea what dogmen were. As far as I'm aware, the dogmen story is just in Ben's town. We tried looking on the internet, but Ben was too easily freaked out by pictures and scary stories that popped up as we searched. The dogman phenomenon really grabbed my attention. Usually kids' ghost stories go into so much detail, like the color of the ghost's dress, or the exact way the hair hangs over the ghost's eyes. But there wasn't much information about dogman. Details were vague. His words at the time were something like, The older kids who were allowed out in the street told us about dogman watching them who stood around in the alleys at night, and the older kids were shamelessly scared to go when it got dark. Obviously it was thugs or druggies, I explained. But he was adamant. No, because they ran away when they noticed the kids watching them. 
they'd climb up the high walls of the back alley into people's backyards really fast without ever making a noise. The older kids wouldn't talk about it unless pushed. He said their feelings seemed too real to make it a joke. His childhood friend Wes claimed to have saw one too. The story goes that dogmen would be found standing in small groups, or more often solitary in the middle of an alley, looking for scraps of food, or better yet, for young children to eat. Ben seriously thinks he saw one with his mom one day walking back from stores. Apparently, it was in a fenced-off area where a block of flats had been demolished only a few years before. At the opposite side of this land, he saw a skinny, hunched-back man cupping his hands full of water from a stream, which ran through the plot, washing his long, greasy hair. Almost ritualistically, even though he didn't seem homeless, his face was quite far away to make out any details, but he swears something about the man wasn't human. I blame the child's imagination and exaggerated memories, but he swears it. He showed me the area that next morning. If he and his mother remember correctly, I have no idea why a homeless man would ever be around that area. I first met Wes a few weeks after the night I learned about Dogman and didn't hesitate to ask for his first-hand account of it. It was the main reason I decided to meet him after all. His description was similar to Ben's, but his encounter was far more close up. Wes lived further from the local corner shop than Ben and used to take a shortcut through an alley where he walked. The wheelie bins were out that day. He said he could hear a cat or dog or feeding on something discarded behind the bins. It happens a lot and everybody knows to keep a distance so the dog won't get aggravated and attacked. But Wes said the dog didn't look right. He only got a quick glance before it ran behind a wall with a rotten roast chicken hanging out of its mouth. According to his memory, it was running more like a hyena than a normal dog, with its shoulders held much higher than its hips. The snout was too short and the ears were more elven than a dog's. He can't remember if the creature had fur or not, but it definitely was more naked looking. Not long after, he overheard the older kids talking about dogmen and realized what he saw. I like Wes. He has a doubting attitude akin to mine and admitted his memory may have been influenced by the other kids' stories. It could have just been a normal dog struggling to carry a whole chicken away after being startled. The story lay dormant and not mentioned for months after I spoke to Wes. In that time, I had moved away and had only managed to visit Ben three times since. The last time I met with him, we decided to go to the local takeaway in the early hours of the morning, and I got my very own encounter of what could have been a dogman. Right on the same abandoned plot where Ben saw the homeless man bathing, there was a decent sized fire burning. I can make out possibly three silhouettes huddled around the flames. Ben's area is pretty rough, so this isn't an unusual sight, but I don't know how to describe it. Those figures weren't moving naturally. My view wasn't great because Ben wouldn't move closer than we were, but I swear those silhouettes never stood completely upright. We watched them for about five minutes. They were hunched over with their backs to us, warming their gloved hands by the fire with their hoods up. I remember one of them moving closer to the fire while keeping its hands on the ground. It would have been easier to just stand and walk closer, but it shuffled awkwardly using its arms. Everything about their movements were indescribably awkward. I was so excited. It had to have been the dogman. I didn't want them to spot us, so we left pretty soon after, but I forced Ben to visit the bonfire with me the next day. There was just a milk crate sat next to a charred circle on the ground, nothing to prove these beings were inhuman. Strangely, there were bones amongst the smoldering papers and branches that had been burning the night before. We could make out sooty handprints where at least one of the persons had presumably crawled directly 
over the charred ground. The trail of handprints led away from the bonfire and faded after a couple of meters. That was all that was found. We walked away feeling slightly silly, laughing at how we had probably been stalking a trio of drunk tramps. However, Ben's realization unnerved us terribly. As the hand trail faded, he pointed out a large paw print becoming more and more prominent in the middle, fading handprints. Then it struck me why I found their gait so weird the night before. As the man had walked closer to the fire, he placed his feet in exactly the same spot where his hands had been. We stared in shock, not sure what to make of the trail. Then the yelps and growls of dogs fighting came from a bush uncomfortably close to us. I'm not ashamed to say we ran away. Maybe it was just a pack of dogs, I don't know. We didn't care to look and I'm never going back there to find out. I know these sets of encounters and stories don't match the typical dogman encounter, but I still thought these events would be interesting to share, as they might shed some light on the whole dogman phenomenon. Thank you, have a wonderful day. I was nine years old when this happened. At this point, I still shared a room with my sister, and so my bed was on one wall with a big window on the opposite side. My sister's bed was right underneath that window. We were on the first floor of the house, but we live on a hill, so it's slanted and it's still pretty high. Anyway, I woke up one Saturday night feeling really thirsty. It was about two or so in the morning and everyone else in my family was asleep. I was about to crawl out of my bed to go to the bathroom just down the hall when I looked at the window and froze. At the very bottom of the window, there was a really dark shape. It looked kind of like the top part of a Siberian Husky's head. It was a big thing with two points that looked like ears on the top. I couldn't make out any other features, so while I was still scared, I just thought it was a reflection of the pillows at the end of my sister's bed. Then it moved. You know how dogs kind of twitch their ears and perk them up when they're trying to hear better? That's what this shape did. The two points that I took for ears twitched and then came back into place, and it wasn't subtle movement at all, so I knew it just wasn't a reflection. The whole dogman story is really big here, and we live right in the woods, so I immediately thought of that. I got really scared, so I did the typical kid thing and pulled the covers over my head and went back to sleep without ever getting my water. In the morning, there was nothing outside the window. No marks on the side of the house, nothing. No evidence that there had ever been something there at all. The thing that really stumps me is wondering how anything would manage to stay up by a window that's nine feet off the ground in the first place. Since I was nine, I do accept that it was possible, I just imagined it. I already knew the dogman story, so maybe I was just scared to begin with and that fear kind of manifested itself. At the same time, I really do believe that there was something outside my window, dogman or not. This happened to me on July 2nd, 2015. While scanning the valley floor for sheep a mile from my house, I noticed two loping figures. Initially, I thought the figures were coyotes or stray dogs, but as the two figures neared an old, sunken vehicle, I realized that the things were about the size of the vehicle itself, nearly eight feet long. No animal could be that big on the reservation. I watched the two figures until they disappeared into the woods, across the valley. It was starting to get dark, but the moon was bright enough so I walked without a light. As I walked down the mountain, I heard something yelling. It was like a howl or a yell. I started to hurry, and then, when I got to my house, I locked the door and spent the night listening to the strangest sounds I'm sure 
It was a dogman. This happened to me last winter, and I haven't seen this creature since. I'm not quite sure if this thing moves around or possibly even migrates from area to area. I can say it's a predator I didn't know existed, and I keep a very close eye on my surroundings now, no matter where I go. Where I live is about 10 miles out of town. I have several old fields around my house from where the last people who lived here had horses and other livestock. Beyond the fields are woods, and these woods go on for miles. And if you go back far enough, the land goes down into a creek that runs along the area. There's a lot of deer out here too, mostly does, but you do see the occasional buck or two from time to time. Like I said, mostly all doe. In fact, I pretty commonly see the same 20 or so doe that lives in the area about all the time. They bed down under a tree not far from my house out in the field. To give a little more detail about my house, it's a little older and larger, so it takes a lot to heat up, especially in the winter. In fact, because of where our wood stove is, it's not uncommon for us to go through five or so cords of wood every winter and that's counting November to March. So we always try and prepare our wood well. Normally, since we have so much wood, I have a wood splitter set up in my woodshed, so I can do all my splitting and stacking right there. Once I get enough wood split and stacked, I try and keep the wood holder that's right in front of my house stocked full, so I don't have to make long trips out to the woodshed every time I need to put a log on the fire. I think this is a pretty common thing for most people who have wood stoves and rely primarily on wood stove heating. In the morning, before I leave for work, I usually try and have my wood holder outside my front door, full of wood for my wife, so she doesn't have to go into our shed. But this particular morning, I was running late, and I can't remember why. My wife had to make do with the small wood that was there, which was left over from the day before. And so it wasn't until I got home that evening that I got an earful, and I had to go out and make sure that she had plenty of wood for the following day, which was my bad. I usually like to keep it filled up just for her. It was dark out since I get home closer to six, and I was going to grab some split wood and fill up our wood holder. I remember stepping outside my house and noticing the air feeling different. Do you know the feeling that when a thunderstorm approaches and the air feels heavier? That's how it felt, except it was January and it was frigid outside. I thought it was weird but quickly brushed it off and walked my way to the shed. As I'm in the shed, I'm grabbing some pieces of wood to put into the holder. I begin to get a bad feeling, like someone or something was hiding out beside my shed and was waiting for me to walk out so they could attack me. I keep a knife in my pocket, but with my arms full of a bundle of wood, I wasn't going to offer much of a fight. I felt nervous. I wasn't sure why I was feeling this. We've lived here for years, went through the same thing every winter, been out to the shed and back a million and one times, never had a problem. In fact, the only predators we've ever seen around these parts are coyotes and maybe a bobcat here or there. Our neighbors are so far away that we never even see them, and I don't ever have anybody just wandering up my driveway knocking on my door. I've never felt uncomfortable any time where I live. At the time, the feeling was so intense, I honestly imagined somebody walking up my driveway planning to hurt me and my family. I tried to brush those thoughts aside and tried to forget about the feeling I had. I walked at a brisk pace back to my front porch to begin loading up the wood holder. As I'm crouched down stacking the wood, the feeling of dread intensifies. What's worse is at this point, my back is completely against the woods and woodshed. I'm defenseless right now, a thought that would not escape me. It only took a moment or two for me to stack the wood in the holder before I turned around and stepped off my porch only to stop right in my tracks. In my direct line of sight were these glowing yellow eyes staring at me 
from one of the trees close by the woodshed. I could just barely make out the silhouette of something very large behind the tree, with one what looked to be a hand holding onto the tree for support. It was pretty dark outside, but my porch light shone enough where I can make out very minimal details. I remember as soon as I saw those eyes, I noticed the shape of tall ears. I stood there in place, frozen, and this thing, not even a couple seconds later, hides back behind the tree. It was watching me. I felt like I was in danger, so I ran inside my house and grabbed my pistol. My wife was wondering why I was pale and had run inside so quickly grabbing my gun. I explained to her there's a large animal or something outside and we need to stay inside and be quiet. I was terrified at that moment, but looking back, I think it was more because of the unknown at the time. Anyway, I waited inside for a few hours for this thing to be gone and courageously had made my way back outside to grab some more wood, since we were just about out of all the wood inside that we had. As soon as I stepped outside, the feeling was lifted. It was closer to 9 or 10 p.m. at this point. The woods were quiet and the air felt normal again. Things were calm. I wasn't taking chances though, and I remember I had never stacked wood so fast in my life after that. I quickly filled up our outside wood storage. The rest of the night was uneventful. The following morning, I was curious to see if there'd be any tracks in the dirt. And keep in mind, it hadn't snowed yet. So I walked out to where I saw this thing standing behind the tree. There was nothing. No signs of nothing. The dirt below didn't even look disturbed. I was confused and began to think I was going crazy. Things did calm down after that, and for the next week, everything was normal, as I recall. I want to say it was the following weekend where I took my wife out to dinner and a movie. As we're pulling back up in the driveway, our headlights shine on the largest black wolf I have ever seen in my life. We're about three-fourths the way up our driveway, just as we're pulling into our house and this large wolf walks right past our house into the field. It looked right over at us and even looked disfigured. I've never seen a wolf like that. It looked like it came from a toxic waste dump or something, or deformed even. My wife was screaming. This thing, I kid you not, was easily the size of a buffalo. It was utterly massive. My wife was panicking and quickly ran into the house. I didn't know what to think to be honest, so I just kept my pistol at my nightstand, ready in case this thing tried to break into the house. This is where things changed. The following nights we begin to hear howling off in the distance. We've heard packs of coyotes hollering and hooping off in the distance before, but this was different. This was powerful howling, so powerful you can feel the vibrations, it was so loud and we'd hear bizarre animal noises outside of our house sometimes at night. Everything from tapping, clicking, shuffling, rustling, you name it. It felt like our house was being watched over by something. One morning, my wife came running in the house in hysterics because she was walking down to the mailbox to check the mail, since our mailbox is all the way at the end of our driveway, and she said that huge black wolf that we saw nights ago was standing on two legs in the driveway, growling at her, walking towards her. She began screaming and crying and ran back into the house. She was frantic and was begging me to grab my gun, worried that this thing was headed right to our house at this very moment. I went to grab my pistol, but as I picked it up from my nightstand, the realization that this thing would only tickle this animal, and in that very moment, I felt like some wounded prey that was about to be eaten. I glanced outside to see if maybe I could see it somewhere, but I didn't see it anywhere outside. My wife basically went and hid for the rest of the day, too scared to even be out, and I never heard or saw that thing outside. I didn't go outside looking though. It's possible it could have been an ambush waiting to happen, but I'm not sure. Things continued and continued to get worse. I would find mutilated deer carcasses in my front yard. In fact, one time while coming home from work 
and driving up my driveway. There was a deer carcass right in the middle of the driveway. It looked like it had a few limbs ripped off, and it was disemboweled gruesomely from the view I had of my driver's seat with my headlights right on it. I had a bad feeling, like this animal had been purposefully killed and left here, knowing I would have to get out and move it so I could drive through, making me vulnerable just long enough to get me. This thing though, this thing thought intelligently, and it really scared me. I just drove around the carcass over the side slopes of the driveway. I truly felt trapped. This animal, whatever it was that I had never seen before, had been tormenting us for reasons I will never know. Those were the major events that happened. Things continued like this for a while. Finally, around March-April time, things finally started quieting down. We hadn't noticed, but the deer had actually disappeared from that area entirely the past few months over the winter, which really never happens. We realized that when we saw much of the deer come back to the area around springtime, we hadn't had any weird feelings and things got back to normal for the most part. I apologize for this being so long, but I just can't quite put my finger on what kind of animal would do such a thing. My wife and I are still baffled alone at the fact that this creature even exists. If any one of you out there has any information on what we might have been dealing with, please let us know. I mentioned earlier we hadn't seen this thing since February or March and are glad that it seems like it left the area. We've lived here for years now and have never encountered something as unusual as this. However, with winter approaching again, we're not sure if this animal will show back up. That is something that truly worries me. Spring of 2012 my wife and I are driving back from visiting family. The drive to get them is quite long, like eight or so hours, and so it's pretty early on in the AM. I'd say maybe two in the morning. We were only an hour or so away from home at the time. We're coming up to a bend in the road when our headlights illuminate this wolf-like creature, crouched down on the side of the road, just staring off. I noticed a wolf-like face with pointed ears. My wife was asleep and I remember gasping and swerving the car as far away from this thing as I could. It was rather large. I would estimate it to be around 8 feet tall, if not even taller. The sudden swerving of the vehicle woke my wife up and had her asking me what the hell I was doing. I told her that there was some huge animal on the side of the road and I didn't want to hit it. Thankfully, my wife never had to see it. Then. Fast forward almost nine months later, and now we're in winter. And my wife and I are coming home again from going out from running errands or something. I can't quite remember, but I remember we were out all day, because it was roughly 8 p.m. at night. I remember it was maybe around 8 p.m. or so, but since it was winter and it gets dark early, my perception of time might be a little off. Anyway, at this point, we're in an entirely different area of town where I saw the last wolf thing. The way we were coming back to the house, you have to go through about a two-mile stretch of this more lone straight road, with lots of wood and brush on one side, with the other side being more open, undeveloped land. We're driving this road, had it been on it for maybe a minute, and this large black shape runs out of the brush on our left behind us and chases our car. My wife and I both panic and I floor the car. As I'm gaining speed rapidly, this thing catches up to our vehicle and then darts off back into the brush. My wife is freaking out. I'm freaking out. This was some werewolf looking creature chasing our car. I should note that there were streetlights on this road, so there my wife and I got a decent look at this being even though it only chased our vehicle for probably 30 seconds at most. I'll describe it for you. It was black and looked really shaggy. It had a wolf-like face and snout and larger teeth. I didn't see anything with the eyes or really much else. It also looked different from the wolf creature I saw nine months prior to driving home. Similar but different looking. 
The wife and I try to forget about it as best we can. We have to take that long stretch of road any time we want to go a specific way into town. Fortunately for us, we haven't encountered it since that event. I was about 15 when this happened to me and my friend. I'm 32 now, so this was quite a while back. We were out on his father's property, shooting off pellet guns thinking we were badass. Practicing our aim, actually, if I remember right. We had quite a few old Folgers cans we had sitting at the top of old fence posts, and we'd try to see who could shoot them from the farthest point away. This was all dandy and fun, and we were having a great time. This was in July, so it was hot as balls outside. I remember because I had a couple of cigs on me at the time, and had the thought that I didn't want to light one out there because all of the tall, dead grass could ignite. See, out where he was, he had a lot of fields around him with a lot of grass that was unkempt, and fire season usually got pretty bad. Anyway, after about an hour of us doing this, I told my friend that nature was calling, and so I walked into the nearby forest that's surrounding the entire property where we were shooting off of our pellet guns. I walked in, maybe no more than 100 feet, to the base of a tree and started pissing. I'm almost done going to the bathroom and I sense that somebody is looking at me. I glance over to my right, and to my horror, not even 20 feet away from me, is a monster straight out of a Hollywood movie. A werewolf. Except it was scarier than I ever could have imagined. This thing was hulking. It looked like someone took the head of a wolf and stuck it on a hairy bodybuilder. This werewolf's head was massive, like the size of a lion's. It stared at me right in the eyes, and I saw just how smart this thing was. It's like it realized that I realized it existed, and it was what it was. It did something next that's even hard for me to talk about, because it scares me so bad. This thing gave me the evilest grin. Yes, it smiled at me. Think of how when you watch the movie, how the Grinch stole Christmas, and all the evil faces that he would make that would scare you. It was like that. This creature was so intelligent that it grinned at me like it had me all alone to itself and was going to rip my guts out and eat me, and I knew there was nothing I could do about it. I got an overwhelming feeling this thing wanted to hurt me. I had never felt pure evil like that in my life. This thing was jet black and had piercing amber-colored eyes, and the biggest teeth I've ever seen on any animal. It began to extend its arms towards me and took a couple of steps and I ran so fast out there, back into the field where my friend is shooting off the pellet gun. I didn't even stop. I just yell at him to get back into the house now. My friend, confused, accepted my motion and ran back to the house with me. When we got back to the house, he was freaking out wondering what was going on and what happened. He could tell I was out of breath, pale, and shaken up. I tried to explain to him what had happened and what I had seen. He would quickly glance behind me and around, and he kept checking back, and said he never saw anything following him or us the entire time. I honestly don't know what it is I saw, but I never want to be around it again. Funny enough, only months later, me and him would go back to that same property to do some hunting, hiking, and all the above, and we never encountered anything beyond the ordinary. It was only that one event which is strange. Oddly enough, as the years would go by, I kept in contact with this friend. In fact, not even that long ago, him and I had a discussion about reminiscing on old times, and he told me other weird things would happen on that property. He said one that really freaked him out in particular was that he would hear these really loud metal scraping noises off in the distance. Now, his father owns about 200 acres of forest game land all around their property, and beyond that is state-owned game land. So there is nothing but miles and miles of middle-of-nowhere woods and forest surrounding him. There is no reason loud metal scraping should be coming anywhere near the forest or near his house. 
he told me it really spooked him. I saw something years back when I was visiting the Buck Shoals State Park. It's a tradition of my friends and me that every year we like to go hiking around the park. Summer and fall is the time of the year that we try and go, just because that's kind of our best availability. In fact, one of our favorite spots to hit in the park is the Chattahoochee River. With all the surrounding timber, it's beautiful, and the fresh air is just fantastic on the lungs. We decide after a while of hanging out at the river to hike in further like we usually do. I like to lead the way, and this time was no exception. I led the way with my friends, about 50 yards behind me. Generally, I like to scout out the area ahead, just to look for cool things to check out. Before, there's been trails, markings, animal tracks, bones, anything that's interesting that I deem worth stopping for. This time, though, I would run into something that I've had a hard time dealing with. I've actually had to seek a therapist for what I saw, just to try and convince myself that I'm not crazy, that I did indeed see an animal that isn't supposed to exist. For some of us, when you see something like that, it shatters your realm of reality. Anyway, I was walking further ahead of my friends, and I noticed a small clearing that dipped down. I figured we would cross the clearing and continue on venturing on. But as I approached the clearing, I saw at the bottom of the hill looked to be a large animal eating a dead deer. I stopped in my tracks at first, thinking it was a large bear eating on the carcass. Right off the bat though, something about the animal just seemed off. It didn't look right. Where I was standing, I could only really see it from behind, and it had a weird shape to it. I know we have sizable black bear down here, and that's what popped in my head at first. After not even 10 seconds, this thing must have noticed me being around, because it stopped eating and lifted its head in the air and began sniffing, just like how a dog would. To my horror, that's when I saw more details. The longer snout, the pointier ears. It shifted its body as it lifted its head up, so I was able to see more details of the body. This thing looked like a giant dark gray wolf that looked well, mutated. I don't know how else to describe it than other than that. It really freaked me out. My friends came up behind me, wondering why I was standing still and silent. Without breaking eye contact with this thing sniffing, I quickly motioned for them to look out into the clearing. Both of my friends gasping, and my one buddy saying, What the hell is that thing? After what seemed like minutes of this thing sniffing the air, even though it was probably only 10 seconds, I said, Guys, we need to turn around and leave. We all left the area, and I wasn't going to chance sticking around and having this thing notice us. I'm blown away that this thing probably caught our scent, but either A, never saw us, or B, knew we were there and realized we weren't a threat. I'm really not sure. I was roughly about 100 to 200 yards away if I had to guess. What I saw looked like a giant black mass that looked more canine than anything. I've seen black bear many times, and this thing didn't quite look like a black bear. It was lighter in color and bigger. Plus, the shape was just different, especially as it started moving its body. This occurred just last week, when my mother was driving home from working late one night. She lives out in a woodier area with a lot of farmland around her. I'm talking acres and acres of farmland. I think a lot of it is actually mainly used for cattle. Anyway, she was coming around a bend in the road when red eyeshine was caught in her headlights. Some sort of creature, she says, stepped out onto the road in front of her, on two feet. This thing then quickly walked across the road and cleared it in only a few steps. It passed by in only mere seconds, 
but it was enough time for my mother to get somewhat of a good look at it. She said it was really tall and estimated it to be between 7 to 10 feet tall. She said it was lankier and it had a dark, smoky gray fur color. This thing never glanced over at her approaching on the road, but the side profile reminded her of a large German shepherd head. The body reminded her of a man, a very skinny, lanky man, covered in dark gray fur. She also noticed this being to have long black claws on the tips of its hands, with the hands being what she can only say would resemble raccoon-like hands from what she saw. Even though she only saw it for a couple of seconds, that's all that time would allow her to see, and she didn't get any extra details in the muzzle, ears, if it had a tail, etc. She was doing about 50, 55 miles an hour when it walked across the road in front of her for a few seconds. Then, she slowed down to about 30 or so, accordingly. Once it crossed, she continued to still slow down, a result of being partially in shock at what she had seen, and worried that there might be more crossing the road right behind it. She kept on driving, though, after a few moments of realizing there was no more coming. She had a hard time sleeping that night, believing that what she saw was some sort of unknown animal. She told me that she's never seen an animal like that in her life, and has never heard of such things. I'm one of the only people that's been told about it besides some of her close friends. My mother isn't into the paranormal, but there's no explaining what she saw that night. This occurred not too far away from Knox County, Ohio. I saw something that I can't explain. I don't know what else it could be. I saw a tiny glimpse of it out my window, and it was walking away from my house. It looked very canine-like and had thick, dark hair covering its entire body. I don't know if it was a Bigfoot or what. It was nighttime, so I didn't get to have a great look at it. It was walking around my house, possibly trying to get in. I saw it walk away quickly, so I didn't get the best look. My wife has talked about seeing a tall, canine-looking animal around our house before, but I never believed her until I saw it for myself. I always thought she was just seeing a big dog or possibly a large black bear. This wouldn't have been the first time either. She's home much more than I am and will hear noises outside our walls and door. She worries that this animal might be trying to break into our house and do who knows what. I'm unsure of its intentions, but it makes me uncomfortable that it hangs around long enough that it wants to get in. This happened a few years ago when I went camping with some of my family that I don't see a whole lot anymore. We went to a campsite that we all usually frequent as a family. After getting into our spot and setting up camp in our tent, we thought we were crazy when we heard animal sounds nearby. Not just any animal sounds though. These were weird high-pitched shrieks and guttural growls. They were strange, but all of us have heard it because we all verified with each other that we were hearing the same thing. The only thing that I'm aware of that we could possibly have heard around here is coyotes and maybe possibly mountain lions. I know that neither of those animals make anything remotely close to what we heard, which made the evening a little bit more on edge. We arrived at our campsite at around 3 or 4 p.m., and it was still bright outside and would be for a few more hours. It was shortly after we got set up that we heard the noises, but then the sound had stopped and we didn't hear it anymore. Even though we were all concerned at what it might be, once we started socializing and having fun, we all seemed to forget about it. As it started to get later in the evening and it was much past sundown, we began to get the feeling that someone or something was circling our campsite. Since it was dark, we couldn't really see out into the trees, but we could certainly hear something walking around. Whatever it was had to have been heavy because the branches it was stepping on were as loud as they broke. 
This seemed to be intensifying more and more as several of us had shuffled off to bed. A few of us claimed to have seen a large shadow moving off just beyond the light of the fire, and more of us began in panic. I assumed at that time there was just a really big bear, which that in itself is scary, but my uncle who was with us at the time said it looked bigger on the shadow alone. Even though a few of us were already asleep, the rest of us were contemplating packing up and leaving because we were scared at what this thing could have been. Finally, at midnight, we had enough and decided we were just going to throw everything in the two vans that we came in to leave. We woke up several of the family that was asleep and told them there was something stalking our campsite and were leaving. Things seemed to quiet down after we made our decision and quickly, within an hour, had gotten everything taken down and loaded up. As we're piling into the two vans, we turn our headlights on, and we all gasp as we see this hairy dog creature. The eyes were the first thing that stood out to me, but we had a good shot of the face. It looked like an ape and a dog had a baby. More baboon-like, if that makes sense. It was, it was ugly. But it did have tall, long ears, and it quickly stood up on two legs and moved out of the headlights. All of us were screaming at what we saw. Its movements were also very human-like in nature, and even had a body like a man, just covered in hair. It made no sound stepping out of the headlights into the forest. But God knows how long that thing had been sitting there, watching us load the van. We floored it out of there. We left so fast, we probably left huge dust trails. We were all terrified since I think most of us would have never imagined something like that happening. I don't know what we saw and I'm not too familiar with animals that match a similar description. I don't know if it was possibly a Bigfoot because it looked very dog-like but still looked ape-like as well. It's frightening to me how this thing moved. Like I said, it was very human-like, and it's standing up on two legs, you know, that whole thing, really took the cake for all of us. It seemed to have back legs like a dog, so when it stood up and walked off, none of us knew what animal even does that. A bear's legs doesn't look like a canine's does. Hopefully, somebody who reads this might possibly be able to give insight to what we saw. I just had a big family gathering last weekend, and I got to see my brother, whom I'm very close with. He recently just moved to northern Idaho and scored a beautiful house with a well, a shed, and a shop, and a wonderful large yard with practically zero neighbors around. I'm jealous to say the least, but very happy for him. He's had it pretty rough for the past few years just because of some life situations, so I'm glad he was able to find something to suit his needs. He said his house and yard have kept him busy, but he kept conversation normal throughout the evening. But after a while, he leaned in and asked if he could tell me about something that's really been bothering him. Being his brother, I told him of course he could. He got really quiet. This bothered me since my brother is a really chipper kind of guy. He proceeded to tell me about this large animal that watches him when he's out splitting wood and doing work in his yard. When I asked him to elaborate, he just tells me that he gets a really bad feeling sometimes when he's out doing work. He tells me he'll see this thing watching him from behind his shed or from the woods. This large gray canine like animal. He says he's never seen a dog as big as that. He says he doesn't notice it until one day, he was out there splitting wood, and he began to feel like he was being watched. He had looked up and saw this thing about a hundred feet away, staring in his direction. He thought it was a bear at first, but was able to notice that the features didn't look right for a bear. It was more slender and had sharper features, ears, and a longer snout. He said this looked more canine like it ever did a bear. He wasn't too bothered by seeing this thing at first, even though he couldn't really explain what it was. It began to really worry him as it got more comfortable and began getting closer and closer, moving from the wood line to behind his shed and even closer to his house. As he's telling me this, 
I'm kind of in shock because even I'm at a loss for what it could be. But I'm just guessing that maybe it was a bear. He kept stressing that it was not a bear and said it did not look right. He tells me that it never acted aggressive or even appeared hostile in any way, only curious. He never got close enough to this thing or hasn't yet to be able to clearly make out a face. Sometimes at night he would hear noises out by a shed, like this thing was banging around and making noise. Sometimes it will get quiet when he's outside and he will know that this thing is standing around somewhere watching him. What really makes him unnerved is when he knows it's around, but he can't see it. Due to its size, my brother feels vulnerable, like this thing is going to continue to get closer until it can grab him and take him away. He said the last time he saw it walking around in the woods out on the opposite side of his house was just recently. Just because it hasn't tried to make any quick moves yet doesn't mean it won't. He said that it makes him nervous and he wasn't sure if this thing had any sinister plans of any kind of attacks. He, he's asked some of his friends about this thing or what it could be and they just look at him like he's crazy and they don't know what he's talking about so he doesn't really like to bring it up. He's not sure what to do. Towards the end of our conversation, he grew more and more into a panic, telling me that he feels like it's only a matter of time before this thing does something. Why would it be getting closer and closer to the house? Why is it getting more brave and wanting to keep an eye on him? He even questioned if this thing had been living in that area long before he moved in. The house had been sitting there on the market for a couple of years vacant, from what he recalled, and the real estate agent didn't mention anything about no dog on the property. I was not really sure what to even say, nor was I prepared for him to tell me this. I feel bad that I didn't really have any good advice to give him. I just told him that he should be carrying some good high-powered rifles in case it makes a move. He told me he had left bear traps around where he lived but had not caught anything that he's aware of. He's even stuck up game cams and left it out for a couple of weeks for there to only be nothing on them. He just left it at him not knowing what to do and we ended up moving on to a different discussion. I have no idea what kind of animal he would be dealing with but after doing a little bit of reading myself, it's possible he might have a dogman on his property. I don't know anything about the land of northern Idaho per se, but what that holds, but it might be possible. Although I can't explain why it's not doing anything but getting closer, my hope is that it's not planning an attack once it feels it can get close enough. That's exactly what I and my brother are terrified of. My buddy and I like to go fishing by this little creek that we've been fishing at for years. You have to walk a ways to get to it because it's kind of back in the woods, but it's a great spot that we found. This creek runs off of a larger river, and right where we fish is where the river feeds into this creek. We've been coming there for years, and it's always been really quiet and peaceful to fish at. That is, up until recently. We saw some sort of weird animal that we have no explanation for. I haven't told anybody about what I saw because I'm afraid that people will laugh. I believe if you're not properly prepared for the things that could be out there, you will only leave yourself vulnerable. My friend and I were out at our spot like usual, getting our reels ready and getting the bait out. My friend asked me what that was and we both looked at the water. This large, what we can describe as a werewolf kind of creature, stands up out of the water and walks out onto shore and up into the woods. We only saw it from the back, but this thing was dark brown, had really long hair and a massive head. I didn't see it having a tail, but it was haunched like a dog. This thing was enormous and literally only 30 feet away from us, but felt much closer. If I had to guess, I would easily say nine feet tall, and was walking on two legs out onto the shore, very visibly and clearly. It probably walked only about 20 or so feet as it stepped out of the water and walked into the tree line. 
it never bothered to look back at us or even turn its head ever to acknowledge our presence. My buddy and I just stared at each other with our mouths wide open, and we were so scared we left our stuff there. I'm not saying that this was a werewolf, but I really don't know what kind of animal it was. Maybe it was a bear on two legs that walked out of the river, but I've never heard of a bear coming out of a river like that, especially on two legs and then casually walking in the forest. This was a large animal and its size alone was intimidating enough for us to bail out of there and forget about our stuff. Since it's not a frequently visited area, if at all, we were able to return in it in just a couple of days and get our stuff back. I'll admit that it wasn't easy to return, and for fear of this thing was lurking in the area, but we didn't stick around long enough for it to show itself, just in case it was. My buddy and I don't really like to talk about it and didn't really have an explanation for what it could be. It scared the both of us bad, and we haven't gone back since. I'm not too sure what to make of it, to be honest. Maybe there's just animals that we don't really know about that live in the area. Anything is possible, after all. Before I go in further detail, I think it's important to state that I've talked to all my neighbors around me, and they're all experiencing the same thing I am, so I know I'm not crazy. We've all been seeing this rather large dog staring into our windows, mostly in the evening and at nighttime. It's shaggy looking and resembles a Doberman Pinscher in some way with glowing eyes. It's been scaring the pants off of people. The neighborhood children are even afraid to go out after dark and play. It just started happening only a few months ago, and much of the neighborhood dogs and cats have begun disappearing. People are scared, and the police won't even bother with the issue. They've been called out here a few times by my neighbors about the same issue, and there's not a whole lot they can do. Where our neighborhood is, is nestled up against a national forest here in northern Wisconsin. I can't remember the name of it exactly, but I know it starts with an N. There's a lot of people around here that throw around the word dogman, but I never paid much attention to it. That is, until I started looking it up. Sightings like the Beast of Bray Road and other eyewitness accounts describe something really like what we've all been seeing around this neighborhood. It's frightening to say the least. The best way I can accurately describe it is it looks kind of Doberman Pinscher-like, but also German Shepherd-like, and is very shaggy looking. It's large, but doesn't quite look like your typical dog. The ears are somewhat pointed, and the snout is thinner and longer. Its eyes seem to have an orange, ambery glow to them. I've seen it staring into my window above the kitchen sink several times. I've heard it walking outside of my house, tapping on my walls. My neighbors tell me about seeing this thing as they pull in from work around their house or in the neighborhood. Do I believe it's a dogman stalking around our neighborhood? I don't know, but I know it's some sort of animal for sure. I don't own any animals or pets, but my next door neighbor does, and in the past three weeks alone, her two cats have disappeared. They're outside cats, and I would see them all the time. Every time I leave my house, they're running over, wanting my love. She usually leaves the food out for them, but lately I haven't seen them either. The food she leaves out for them is still there, even now, days later. Virtually untouched. It's kind of eerie, don't you think? I don't want to think about this supposed dogman, we're all saying is responsible for the disappearances of all the pets. But I don't know what other conclusion to come to. Is this thing eating all the pets? What's going on? Are we really seeing a dogman? We've all lived in this area for a while and have never heard or seen anything that stands out as out of place, per se. This just started happening back in June and has been occurring ever since then. My other neighbors speculated that this thing is coming in and out of the woods, and that's where it came from. I don't know, to be honest. It's disturbing to me that all the people around me talk about seeing the same thing and have all seen it in all hours of the night and day in the area. Why would this animal move into the area? I hope someone can read this and possibly 
shed some light on the situation. This experience happened to me about 15 or so years ago, just shortly after I married my wife. I want to say it was in the fall of 2006 or 2007. My father-in-law wanted to take me out hunting on his property since I grew up in the city and, and had parents that never did any outdoor-like stuff. No hunting, no camping, my parents aren't really that type. I am, however. Luckily for me, I had friends growing up who shared the same interest with me, so I did get to experience it just a little bit, even if it was only here and there. My father-in-law knew that I had never hunted before, and he wanted to take me out for a couple of days for my first time hunting. My father-in-law is a big hunter. He has many trophies, and he's going to go after everything from squirrels to bear and moose. He has many trophies, and he's gone after everything from squirrels to bear to moose. He has many trophies and is also very good at archery hunting. In fact, before we even went out hunting, he made me fire out on his original muzzleloader to make sure I could handle it. He's an interesting cat, I'll say that for sure. He had been hunting since he was just a kid, so he knew his way around nature. He also happened to own 70 acres of land out of ways where he used to live that he would exclusively hunt on out in the fall. He would even go there for turkey season in the spring too. It was his go-to spot and had a lot of bucks that would usually show up on the land. He's even gotten some elk up there too, if I remember correctly. Our plan was to leave early Friday morning and leave Saturday evening, hoping to get a kill. My father-in-law had everything all prepared, even down to the camo I would wear. I stayed the night at his house with him, and we got up really early, at about 3 in the morning, and headed out. His 70 acres that he owned was about 40 minutes from where he lived, so not too far away. He lived out in the boonies anyway, so it was just a lot of single long roads surrounded by nature everywhere you turned. I remember we pulled up into a small stretch of gravel road that went down away and then turned, only to come to this big iron gate that said, private property, no trespassing. He got out, loaded up our gear and headed in. I was excited because, like I said, this was my first time ever hunting. I was thinking about how I would get the first kill jitters and shakes. I was ready. That, however, never happened. The road went down further past the gate that we walked down, only to come to this huge clearing with trees sporadically placed off in the distance, and a huge drop-off to our left. My father-in-law told me that his tree stand is just a little ways further. We continued to hike in. It had to be about 20 minutes later when things started getting uncomfortable. When we first walked in, it was wonderful. It was a cool, overcast morning with the sun just barely starting to break through. Our light was minimal, but you could still make out general shapes. We did have flashlights with us to help get us to the tree stand, but like I said, you could just barely see at this point. Since this was in the fall, I know it couldn't have been too terribly early. Maybe around 5 or 6 in the morning if I had to guess. The forest, however, is alive at night, and there's sounds and noises all around you. I was informed that we were almost to the stand. That's when him and I heard this loud crashing noise from off to our right. It sounded like a school bus crashing into the woods. We both looked over and shined our lights. It was just dark enough that you couldn't quite see beyond the light but could see off in the distance from the shadows of the tree brush moving around. The bang sounded like a big tree crashing down. My father stopped me and stayed perfectly still, telling me to turn off my light and turning off his as well. We stood there for a moment and noticed the forest around us had grown so quiet you could hear a pin drop. It was eerie. I had never heard it this quiet before. I was starting to get freaked out, partially because of the unknown and 
I was really sensing my father-in-law's fear at the time. He was staring intently over in the area where the crash came from, with his finger pressed tightly against his lip to signal silence. It honestly scared me, if you ask me. He's a pretty tough dude and has so much experience in the woods, I've never seen him fearful. Not like this. After a moment had passed, he leaned over to me and slowly whispered, We need to leave now. We're being stalked. Immediately, I felt my stomach drop. I thought he meant there was a mountain lion or something in the area. I began to turn around, and as me and him began taking a few steps back, we hear this crashing in the woods parallel to the direction we walked. It was so terrifying, it sounded like somebody driving a massive truck. Whatever it was happened to be huge, because you could hear it panting and breathing. It was keeping pace with us, but far enough away that we couldn't quite make out what it was. Even as it was starting to get lighter out, we moved quickly, but this thing was starting to move ahead of us and to our left. At this point, we were running. This thing was going so fast, we were thinking it was going to run in front and try to flank us. We slowed down and heard this thing in the woods keep running further and further in the distance until it eventually ceased. Then it got really quiet again. We stood there waiting in silence to see if this would come back, but it never did. My dad motioned for me to remain quiet and for us to sit there longer and wait. After what I would guess was maybe 10-15 minutes, we slowly made our way back to the truck. The sound around us never came back, it remained dead quiet for the remainder of our trip back to the truck. We got back and just threw our stuff in and got out of the area. My father and I didn't say a word for a while. I broke the silence with him and asked him what did we run into back there. He didn't respond for a moment or two. And then, without breaking eye contact with the road, he just told me the past few times he'd come by his land, he's been seeing this massive oversized wolf. He said the past couple years it's been around the area. He thinks because there's such an abundance of wild game and deer, that is why this thing is in the area. He told me the disturbing thing about this wolf is that it doesn't quite look like a wolf. He said it looked scarier and wasn't quite sure how to elaborate on that description. He told me it would walk on two legs, and that really scared him. He was hoping that this year it wouldn't have been around and hopefully would have left. He apologized to me that my first time hunting had to have been spoiled by this thing, and he would take me out to a different area sometime in the future. He told me where I was standing, I couldn't see it. Back where we were standing, from where he was, he could see these glowing eyes watching him and I. That's why he was staring so intently. He said he even saw the silhouette of this thing, but I didn't see anything myself. Keep in mind at the spot we were, there's heavy amounts of foliage, so it's possible I didn't just see it because of that. I certainly heard it though, and that alone was scary. I was shocked at what he was telling me, but he was just so stern when he told me. He wouldn't lie about this kind of thing. I mean, he's such a no bullshitter kind of guy, it's not even funny. I asked him what he planned to do about it, and he just told me to let it run its natural course. If this animal is really there for all the food, it won't be around forever. He might just have to hunt that thing down himself. He jokingly told me that there's no sort of tag for that animal, so he'd just have to bury it if he killed it. I saw what I can only describe as a huge, black and hairy thing that ran out in front of my car the other month. My in-laws live way out in the sticks and I was on my way home. Even just getting into my car, I felt like I was being followed by somebody and it really put me on edge. As I was getting into my car, 
I'm pulling out of the driveway and I start to descend the hill that leads back down the main road in which I need to take. This thing leaps from the wood line and lands in the middle of the road immediately upon landing, looks up at my vehicle approaching. The first thing I saw was the unique build this animal had. It was on all fours and its back was arched like a cat or like a cheetah would be. Its lower part of its body sunk down, much like a hyena even, I guess that that's how you want to describe it. For some reason, I wasn't too shocked at what I was looking at, but maybe it's because my brain hadn't quite processed what I was seeing. This thing didn't spend more than a second or two looking at me before it leapt off into the thicker brush on the right side of the road. I have never in my life heard or seen an animal like what I saw. I do remember it was dark red in certain spots and had interesting streaks on its fur, but its face and part of his chest was black. I remember it had really long arms and legs. They were lanky and it seemed to have a really weird body formation. Like its legs and arms and head were too big and disproportionate. It was a strange sight to behold. Even its head was pretty disproportionate to the rest of its body, just in size. I would imagine the neck muscles needed to support a skull that large. Just in the position that it was in, much like some of the big cats you see, the ripples of the muscle underneath the fur. Especially with my headlights illuminating this thing head on, you can tell this thing was built for strength and speed. If you need a better depiction, think of a horse. Their muscle ripples are pretty clearly defined under their fur coat. It was like that, and then imagine shining a light on that. It was frightening. I want to stress to you just how big this animal was. I mean, it was easily the size of a horse, but it clearly was not a dog, nor a horse. Dogs don't arch their backs like that, and not even Great Danes get that large. Maybe this thing was going after some deer, or trying to get some food, but it seemed like it was on a mission to get somewhere, and I just happened to come up in it in the road where it landed. It didn't seem too bothered by me though. It never bared its teeth or acted in any way. I think it just stared at my oncoming headlights and then bolted. I was the only one on the road at the time, so I'm pretty sure nobody else thought that than me. To be honest with you though, I have no idea what I saw. I don't know what kind of animal looks like that. I haven't really told anyone because they would just tell me I was either hallucinating or what. But I swear I'm not making this up. This did indeed happen to me. I'm writing into you because I wanted to know if maybe you could tell me what kind of creature is stalking my trailer at night. Based on listening to your content and reading a little bit about it on Reddit and the internet, it seems like I might have a dogman in my neighborhood. Let me just say that for those who are looking for this creature, don't. If it finds you, I would deem you unlucky. I never asked for this thing to happen, and I wish I would have never had run-ins with this thing. I'm awake pretty late most nights since I suffer from chronic pain in my wrists and ankles, and I'm just an all-around night owl anyway. I live in a small, single-wide trailer by myself. The area in which I live is fairly open with some woods here and there and canals not too far away. What I experience is several different things. Before I ever saw it, I just heard it banging on my trailer and making noise. Sometimes it would sound like it would charge into my trailer and bang as loud as it could. It's left noticeable dents on the siding of my house as well as claw marks and other weird markings. The claw marks weren't deep though. It was as if this animal was trying to just leave markings or something. That's the way I at least interpreted it. I remember one night I was doing dishes and looked outside my kitchen window to see this thing climbing out of the brush and was heading right towards my house. It was like I was watching a horror movie unfold before my very eyes. My jaw and eyes opened in horror and I remember I slammed the plate down that I was washing, promptly breaking it. I ran to all my doors and windows and locked them and turned off all my lights. I hid in the corner and listened. I remember hearing this thing pace slowly around my trailer for the next 45 minutes, give or take. It never made a noise, but sometimes 
you would hear a tapping along the walls, pushing up against the trailer, and then it would go silent. Then you would hear it pace around the house again, slowly. After maybe an hour, in total, it stopped, and I did not get the courage to get up and look out the window for at least another hour or two, just to see if it was gone. The whole time I remember sitting there, not even knowing what to do. Should I call the police? Would they even be able to help me? Would they even want to help me? This happened to me about 4 p.m. in the evening, so it was broad daylight at the time. This thing is much more active at night. Part of me almost wonders if it's because it can't really be seen then. I keep blinds and curtains over all my windows. I don't even want to risk seeing this thing looking in. I will often worry that this thing is looking for a weak spot to break into my home just so it can get me. I was 12 years old when this happened to me and I remember it very vividly. I had woken up in the middle of the night to go and get some water and I did. Then I think I had to use the bathroom. Afterwards, I crawled back into bed but couldn't quite get comfortable and began tossing and turning a bunch. The motion light detector turned on outside my window. My bedroom is near where the front door is, so when the motion light detector goes off, I can clearly see if somebody is standing outside of our door from where I'm laying in bed. It's bright enough that even with my eyes closed, I saw there was a change in lighting. Out of my reflexes, I opened my eyes and looked and pressing its face against the glass was the ugliest dog I've ever seen. After a second or two of staring and horror at this animal, it began dragging its face left and right, smearing saliva and mucus against the glass while never breaking its eye contact with me. I remember it having huge pointed ears and a longer snout. It reminded me a lot of a German Shepherd, to be honest. It was much uglier than a German Shepherd, though. My aunt used to have a German Shepherd, and I loved that dog. As it was dragging its face against the glass, I was screaming and wasn't sure what to do. It's like it was smirking at me. It's like it got entertainment from my total terror and fear that this thing was staring into me. I've never been stared at so intently by anyone or anything before. It was wicked. Next thing I know, I'm running out of my bedroom and I must have been so enveloped in fear that I don't even remember jumping up out of bed. Only ever thought that one time and it's not like we live anywhere crazy. We're in a typical little neighborhood. I don't even think there's any forest or woods anywhere around where we live. My father is a pastor and after telling him what I saw, pleaded the blood of Jesus and prayed over me and the house. I don't know if that did anything, but like I said, I never saw this thing after that happened. After I ran out of my bedroom and into my parents' room and telling them about what happened, they never went and checked outside my bedroom. I don't know if it's that they believe me or what, but they did not dismiss what I saw, only comforted me in my fearful state. I guess I should be thankful that I have such understanding and believing parents. I know most people would write off their child immediately and tell them to go back to bed. It probably helped out that I was 12 years old versus being a little kid and telling them about what I saw. I live out near the Arkansas River and have already had run-ins with what I would believe to be the dogman. For those of you that don't know, this is what's described as a large black dog that will get you killed if you're not careful. At least that's what I believe. In fact, I have to keep my animals in at night for fear that they will be slaughtered. I used to have four dogs, but one of them was killed recently by what I believe to be this animal. He was a bloodhound and I loved him very much. We called him Brave, and I had gotten him since he was just a puppy. One evening, as I was getting home from work, I saw him lying in my back field, beaten and bloody. When I ran over to him, he was covered in blood from head to toe and had deep six inch lacerations all over his body. The lacerations were in patterns of four and five, like he was clawed violently by some large animal. 
It looks like one of the lacerations nicked his artery in his neck, because he was bleeding out and was almost gone by the time I had got to him. His eyes were already glazed over. Well, at least one, because his left eye was missing, and it looks like he was pretty swollen with a couple of bones broken. I began sobbing uncontrollably as I lost him in my arms. I had no idea what did this to him. My first thought was bear, but I haven't seen a bear around here at all, and bears don't do this that I know of. It wasn't long after that that I began to find other mutilated animals around where I live. Deer were pretty common to find ripped up, but sometimes you would see raccoons, possums, and even skunks sometimes, just shredded into ribbons. I have no idea what animal goes out here and kills small animals and just leaves them. It's like these animals are just being killed for the sake of killing. Just recently, I began hearing a bunch of screaming up by the river at about 9 at night. It didn't sound like a human screaming. It sounded like an animal of some kind. I was too cautious and scared to even risk going out and seeing what it was. The way my property sits is if you exit the back screen door and you walk out a ways, I would say 200 yards, the land will start to go downhill to a creek. The screaming sounded like it was coming from the creek. Whatever was making it had to have been large because it was so loud. Instinctively, I wanted to say mountain lion because the only rational explanation that would pop in my mind, but it didn't quite sound like a mountain lion. I won't even dare step foot any further than I need to where I live without carrying a high caliber rifle, just to be safe. I've seen this critter a few times before, and I don't trust it more than I trust lawyers. This thing has been terrorizing me for long enough, and I will not hesitate to put a bullet into this thing. For those of you who have dealt with similar experiences, I'm sure you'll agree that this thing is easier to hear than it is to see. I've only ever seen it a handful of times, but I hear it way more often than I would want to. It's almost as if it wants me to know it's in the area, but doesn't want me to see it. So therefore it goes around and leaves mutilated dead animals for me to run into and find, which I've been reading up on and I guess that's more of a common occurrence with these dogmen than you'd want to believe. Dead cats, dead dogs, skunks, possums, you name it. Mutilated, ripped up. It's like I'm living in a horror movie. Back in 2011, when I went to go hike with a friend in Colorado in the winter, I experienced a creature that was dark black, easily was about 8 feet tall, and looked like a massive wolf. We're out hiking at the base of one of the mountains around where he lives, and everything was blanketed in snow. We had been hiking for a couple of miles when my friend stops me and pointed off in the distance about 65 yards away where him and I both saw what looked to be a huge wolf standing up watching us from the tree line. It responded immediately to us looking at it, as if it didn't want us to see it. It began growling menacingly. The amount of force this animal had from a growl alone was immense. My friend and I could feel the vibrations through our body, and it was at least 65 yards away, like I said. This thing looked angry that we noticed it and began to show more and more aggressive behavior, but hadn't yet made a move to come to us. Neither my friend nor I had any weapons on us, which, in hindsight, was really dumb on our part. We were curious, but we were also terrified, and I think at this point we had more than enough of what we needed to and so we turned around and we fled. We were both honestly surprised this thing didn't try and follow us to eat us. I remember I asked him, I didn't think Timberwolves got that big. And he said to me, I didn't think they stood on two legs either. I wanted to tell you about something that I saw recently on my morning commute to work. I was taking the road to where my job is that leads me a little bit out of town where I work. And I see this weird looking dog clear the road in one jump and landed on top of a pile of rocks across the road. It was crazy to watch and I remember saying to myself, what is that? 
I know I didn't hallucinate it because the sun had just come up and it was light enough outside and you could clearly make out a large dog that jumped far enough to clear the road. After it landed on the rocks, it ran down to them to where you couldn't see where it went. I didn't really get any other details because it happened so fast. I want to keep telling myself it was just a really big dog, but I don't know any dog that gets as big as what I saw. Back about 20 years ago, when I was visiting Kentucky, because that's where my dad used to live, I saw something that most people believe doesn't exist. I call it a werewolf. I've heard other names for it, but I really don't know what else to name it. Back in 2001, I was trying to find my dad's house for the first time since he moved there, and I was using a map to try and find out what road to take. I can't remember what two-lane highway I was using, but I remember turning off into a pullout to park my car and study the map to get a better look. As I'm looking down at the map, trying to find the right road to take, I get this overwhelming sensation that somebody is looking at me. I look up and look to my left onto the road, and there's nobody. No cars. Nothing. Then, I look to my right, and standing not even 10 feet away from my vehicle is a living werewolf in the flesh, or at least that's how I would describe it. This thing had to be 9 to 10 feet tall easily, and was more solid than somebody who bench presses 200 pounds. This thing was a behemoth, with the head that resembled someone of a Doberman pincher, with sharp pointed ears and a wider, shorter snout. This thing was covered in jet black hair, but not long and shaggy like. It was more short and coarse, and I could vividly remember seeing the muscles rippling through its fur. It was glaring at me, looking me right into the eyes menacingly. It seemed pissed off that I pulled into that pullout and saw it. I don't know if I encroached on its territory or what I did, but I got the strong feeling that it did not want me around. I'm staring at this animal in total shock. It's like I was in some sort of trance looking into its evil, glowing eyes. After what felt like 10 seconds, I was able to snap out of it. I threw my car into drive and I whipped out of there fast. I was probably doing around 65 to 70 miles per hour when that highway is only 45. Hi, I know this isn't too much of an encounter, but I live in eastern Texas and one night I was driving, I saw the largest timber wolf I've ever seen step up to the road and clear the entire thing in one leap. This wolf was easily the size of a horse and gray in color. I don't really remember too many other details because I was coming around a bend in the road and I just seen this large dog step up to the road. Then I realized its size and then, well, it leaped over six feet in the air and cleared the road. It all happened so fast, but doggone it, it scared the living daylights out of me. I run a small taco truck outside of town. We're actually set up in an old, what used to be Kmart parking lot. Lately, I've been having to dish out a lot of my profits in repair due to the huge dents and scratches that keep appearing on my taco truck at night. Luckily, we've moved, so since then we haven't had to deal with it, but the damages, well, they take a little bit longer to take care of. We close down at about 8 p.m. and I have my small, two-man crew clean up and then head home by 8.30. For a while, I didn't have any surveillance equipment whatsoever and began noticing deep scratch marks in my truck. This would happen more often than not, but I don't want to say it was every night. Other times, we would show up in the morning and there would be huge dents on the side of my vehicle. Since we're on the outskirts of town, there's not a whole lot of other things in the area, but we're able to get a decent amount of foot traffic due to the strip mall that's close by. But behind us is just an undeveloped plot of land with wilderness beyond that. My initial impression is that we're attracting critters because my employees aren't properly disposing of daily waste and food products. Once I bought and installed the surveillance system, I quickly learned that to be false. 
What I saw on the surveillance scares me and baffles me still. When I would watch the tapes back, I would see this canine figure approach the truck and attack it. This thing would walk around the truck, weirdly, and sporadically attack like it was an animal itself, clawing and biting. There would be other moments where you could see this thing charge the truck from off camera and slam into it, moving and rocking the entire vehicle. I remember watching it for the first time thinking, what the hell? I even had some of my employees watch it with me, just to make sure I wasn't crazy and that I was not the only one seeing this thing. I don't know what the hell this is, or what kind of animal is attacking my truck, but it cost me a lot of money, and I ended up having to move my truck far, far away from there. I don't know how much I could stress to you that this animal was big, and it was walking on two legs. I don't know what kind of animal walks around on two legs, but this one did. Where our new location is, that I haven't had any issues so far, but I have a nice 12 gauge shotgun ready to use in case this thing decides to attack my truck ever again. I have cousins that live in Montana. They've just recently found out some interesting information about the land that they live on. This information has helped them understand the reasons why things are happening where they live. Let me elaborate. For years now, since moving in where they have, they've been experiencing some kind of bizarre animal on their property. They've described it as having a long dog snout, covered in fur, and lean and muscular looking. They haven't shared with me too many other details, like if it's trying to get into their house or has been wanting to hurt anybody. Nothing like that. My cousin told me that it hangs around just a little too much and she is a very firm believer in the paranormal and cryptids. She firmly believes that it is a dogman. She's the one that started doing heavy homework on the subject and found out that the whole area in which their house used to be built was an Indian burial ground many years ago, long before there was any residential development in the area. From what she gathered is that her neighbors aren't experiencing the same thing. It's just them on their plot of land. This is just my own curiosity, but I almost wonder if it might have anything to do with their beliefs. They are Ekinkar followers. I have no idea if that adds any extra spiritual pull for the dogmen to show up on the land, or if they're just protecting what the natives used to have there long ago. This encounter happened back in the early 1970s, as told by my father. This took place in Northern California, perpendicular to a larger river. I can't exactly remember the name in the river in which he told me about because he passed away not long ago and I just want to get his story out there and heard. He was a pretty young man at the time of his encounter, I want to say maybe 17 at most. My father was going down to the river to skip some rocks or do something like that, when close by him, in thick brush, popped out a dog head with glowing red eyes and dark gray fur, as my father described it. It scared him, so he ran away and never went back to that river, as far as I know. That used to be a hot spot for him and his friends to go hang out, but he tells me that his other friends whom he hung out with had told him that they too had been seeing the same monster. Before my father died, he did do some looking into on the area and its history. He found out that there had been a lot of black magic and occultism practice in and around that forest area, taking place in the same area as well years back. He told me he had no idea if there was any correlation to that and what he had saw, but doesn't necessarily write it off that what he saw was a demon or something. He just wasn't convinced it was a living animal and something that had come from out of hell. 